Welcome, everyone. This is going to be episode six. This is six, right? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Cool. Uh, it's easy to lose count when you have when you're be- jumping back and forth between stuff you've recorded and stuff you're still editing. Uh, but yes, uh, this is going to be episode six of Ragtag Bag of Bastards. Uh, I'm Docs. I'm the DM of this little D and D game, and we've got. Let's go with Red first. Hi, Red. Hi, I'm Red, and I just snarfed down almonds. And the only other thing I've eaten today is raw tuna. I was more looking for what character you play, but that's oh, also interesting. I play raw tuna. <laughs> I, I play uh, raw tuna, the cleric. <laughs> no, um, I play uh, Rhodes, the Asimar paladin. <laughs> Excellent. And yeah. also too much information. Uh, Scott, what's up? Hi, I'm Scott. I play... Uh, Flynn, the half-elf rogue, and I am currently eating pizza. You have my envy, sir. Renee, how are you? I'm good. Uh, I am Renee. I play the tiefling bard. I very smartly ate before I came. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking show off. <laughs> I think all of us are smart enough to know to eat. And, and yet. All the way on the other side of my desk for a reason. <laughs> all right. And last but not least, KQ, what's up? Uh, hi, I'm KQ. I play Alezi, the half-orc barbarian, and uh, I will not mention my eating habits, for they are many. Boo! <laughs> She's not wrong. Combo breaker. <laughs> Alright, so we've had our fun talking about food, now let's stop having fun and play some Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> Woo! Perfect. Uh, so to catch up, last time uh, the group had, was coming down after Alezi doing well but not perfectly at the Blood in the Sand qualifications, and also Flynn got his ass kicked there. And the uh, the a t- member of the town ca- guard, a woman named, calling herself Williams, came in during the middle of this semi-celebration that was actually kind of low-key, all things considered. And offered the group a job to look for a dwarven nobleman in who had gone missing in a part of the city called the Drain. Uh, and after that came a whole lot of knowledge checks to determine what everybody knows before we get into this. And that's really mostly what we accomplished last time. But and we got, we got on, on the, the subway. subway. And, and then you all got on the subway. Uh, but you guys know a lot of stuff, so it'll be interesting. Uh, and yeah, we're going to join in this session while you guys are still on the train. Um, you guys got on the train, and you are heading to the drain. And you are in a train. Hmm? I was going to point out that it rhymed, but then I thought you might kill me. Rhymes are fine. It's puns that I have a problem with. Make sure it's a good pun before you use it. Yes, if you are going to use your one pun that I will give you without punishment, it must be good. <laughs> and it's the party pun, so you better make sure it's a good one. <laughs> I give the rest of the party permission to beat you up if you use it on a bad one. But only if Red uses the bad one. If anybody else uses a bad one, there's no permission to beat up. Oh, cool. <laughs> Welcome cool. to the party, the party new. <laughs> We gotta jump you in. Is this is this like when you join? Speaking of getting back on track, no, no, we're on a train. <laughs> is this like when you join a fraternity at Clown College? <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes in, and Docs has already lost control. <laughs> oh God, it's gonna be one of those days, and it's entirely my fault. I have no one to blame but myself. <laughs> Is there an actual question to answer here, or are you just being a dick? No, I just wanted to think about clown fraternities. Okay, so you were just being a dick. When am I not? Let's play the dice game. It's the dice game called Dungeons and Dragons. You are on a train! Uh, you're going to a part of town that sucks, and there are only like two other people on the train with you. This is a part of town that people generally don't want to go to as if they don't have to unless of course they're one of the people who run things in the drain but you guys are like you you could speak to each other privately if you wanted to there's not enough people here to overhear you to be worried about it as long as you're keeping your voices down so is there any discussion that you guys want to go through before we get back to like before you guys get to the surface i would like to ask a question and this is going to go so well because of my Exhaustion. Yes. You said 
last session that people don't get robbed at the station. Oh at, God! Oh. At the station in uh in Shadeside, that's correct. My question is: Do people go that? Um. Well, not this. This is my assumption. The question is coming. My assumption is that people, while they do not actually steal there, they might uh, look for marks there. And that's- there are there are a couple of people in this train, as you said. I would like to know if any of them are following us. Uh, roll perception. And of course, that's going to go so well because yes. of my history with. <laughs> and also, you are exhausted and therefore have to take yep. a disadvantage. 12. How average. Uh, you don't see anyone following you at this point. Okay. I'm so proud of Flynn. I thought he was going to do a train robbery. Yeah, God. <laughs> <laughs> Another time, perhaps. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you... If people were... Your, your instinct is that if people were looking at the station for marks, they would look for people getting off the train. Uh, typically, if you're going to the drain... You either don't have anything of value to take, or you're much too dangerous to try to steal from. Okay. So, uh, going in this direction, you're probably safe. Awesome. Anything else to discuss before we uh, head to the drain? So, guys, I've 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 been thinking since this morning, and uh-huh. and totally, no, it wasn't sense. over the week that we weren't playing or anything. No, it's only been like not even that long. So, <laughs> I've been thinking, and you know, if this uh. Stone hearth, dude. Stone kiln. Whatever. Uh, if he's as rich as they say, why did he need to go down to the drain to get a prostitute? Maybe he likes them dirty. I, I, I told mean, you. I told you. I to bring you one. I, I know the guy. He likes to party. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you wouldn't bring a prostitute. Like you pay somebody else to bring a prostitute to you. No. Somebody in a slightly less I'm likely to be robbed neighborhood. U- Una has. May- a maybe he. Maybe he's the type who likes one specific prostitute. Again, he probably has enough money he could pay somebody to bring him one. He would have kn- You'd think he would have known somebody would have seen him going to the drain. I harbor suspicions this isn't about prostitution. Eh, I really don't care one way or the other as long as we find him. Well, but it's going you know, to be he easier has... to find him if we know what he was doing. Look, he probably uh, lives with his folks. He's a, he's a noble. They probably have this huge estate somewhere. They probably wouldn't like him bringing the dirty, filthy prostitute back to their nice, clean establishment. I guess that makes sense. But I know Officer Williams said nobles have been disappearing out of these parts for a while. So, Docs? I don't know. Dox, can I ask a question? No, there's, there's no question. Yes, what's up? <laughs> um, the drain isn't the only place in the city to get a prostitute, right? No, not even a little bit. Yeah, thought so. Like, I'm sure there are, like, prostitution tiers. Yes, exactly. Um, yep. my, okay, Rhodes' background as a paladin of the lover would give him a little bit of insight into this. But yes, there are definitely tiers. And at the drain, you're looking at lower to mid-tiers. Uh, it depends on uh, which establishments you're going to. But uh, it would... You, it, you, you, you defi- also have the value of discretion, which is very important to nobles. Right. Well, what I was about to add there was that uh, it seems like you you wouldn't find a noble tier of escort, uh, which is, of course, what they would call this business. Uh, they, you wouldn't find a noble tier of escort in the drain, most likely. So, like, that does... you. There is some reason to be suspicious of the whole story. Thoughts? Cool. Well, we'll find out when we get there and start asking around. Is that the best course of action? Just to barge in and start making trouble? I mean, it's gotten us this far. Asking around to the isn't necessarily making trouble. I mean, unless Flynn does it. Rude. No, you're right. <laughs> okay, then we're done with the discussion on the train, guys? I mean, I guess. Let's arrive in the drain. Let's all put on in our headphones and just ignore each other, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Alessi would totally be doing this if she had headphones. Alas, headphones have not really been developed yet. All right, anything, if we're done, then we can skip ahead to getting off the drain. Okay. All right, so about a 20-minute train ride passes, 
and you guys get off at the station at the drain. The two other customers on the on the tram also get off here, and they quickly move to get out of the station. And it doesn't take you long to figure out why. Whereas the station at Shadeside was uh, kind of a community gathering point uh, where a degree of safety could be expected. This place is very much not that. Uh, this uh, station is mostly abandoned except for the few personnel here to try and try and keep keep things running. Uh, you can you definitely get the sense that you know if you if you were alone then it's Flynn especially you get the sense that you guys would probably be followed out of here. But there is a degree of safety in numbers. Uh, looking around, there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of graffiti on the walls as well. Uh, Flynn, you have Thieves Cant, correct? Yes. All right, so uh, the Thieves Cant you've grown up with was mostly from Trollendor, which does not have exactly the same uh, language as you see in Eldemir, but you are beginning to learn it. And you do see small signs here and there, nothing that really concerns the party at this point. Uh, instructions on where to go to find uh, places to stay, uh, places where you can find food, uh, places where there are supposedly easy marks, but then you see a, another sign written over top of that that implies danger there, so that might have been a booby trap that has been sprung by someone else. Lots of signs in this graffiti that are trying to communicate things about the area, none of which are relevant to your current situation. Yeah, just just part for the course of what you get with Thieves Camp. Exactly. Like nothing, you know, nothing that interesting at this time to you. So you guys head out and uh, end up in the drain. Uh, um, and go on. Oh, uh, Leslie's gonna uh, put her guard up again now that they left the subway, so I'm just going to roll a quick perception. Very well. Oh. And that's a uh, 22. 22. Yes. Uh, so you definitely spot people uh, who are in alleyways, definitely giving you an eye, but uh, you've got a big fuck-off half-orc, a paladin who is in heavy plate with a great sword, and then two more people who don't look that intimidating by themselves, but all the same. You're a big group, and two of you look obviously dangerous. So it stands to reason that nobody's going to give you shit unless you give them shit first. Nobody's following you at this point. Okay. Uh, you definitely do note that people have, uh, have taken note of your presence, though. Uh, right. So moving out into the drain proper... Uh, as I believe I said last session, the place is called called the Drain because uh, canal building in uh, over the Leyline River, which runs through the city of the center of the city, has left. There is an error that caused water to spill into the soil in this place, and so everything is a little bit muddy. And there's a uh, almost uh, constant mist in this part of the city. So even though it's still sunny and relatively clear elsewhere, it seems uh, gray and overcast here simply because there's so much mist in the air. Uh, the, uh, the place is still lit up by glow lamps powered by uh, standard monotech uh, fuel sources, but overall the, the, air, the atmosphere here is a lot more foreboding than even Shadeside, which is constantly in shade because of the continent above it. Even that does not seem quite as unsafe as this place. Uh, the buildings are all made of wood with cross beams. You see a lot of ceilings have had makeshift uh, wooden patchwork over holes for various reasons. Uh, and a lot of windows are like that as well. There's just an, a run-down feel to the place. Uh, you see uh, bridges leaning, leading between... most. Of the average building here is at least three stories tall. Most of them go uh, four or five. And you see bridges over the street that lead between buildings so people don't can go between different establishments without actually going onto the street, which is a uh, mostly cobblestone road that is slick with moisture. You see, strangely enough, you see clothes lines between these buildings where uh, scraps of cloth uh, can be, or, or clothing can be seen suspended through them, which 
is not immediately obvious why one would do this since air drying in such a place is utterly impossible. Flynn, you would know that these are gang signs uh, that are uh, advertising various services or products to people in the know. Like the shoes on the exactly wire. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this, this, these would be equivalent to a shoe sign in this setting. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that's the general surroundings. There are not many people on the street, but you do see people within buildings that um, have various things going on. You do see shops, uh, mostly low-key pawn shops uh, or uh, cheap restaurants. Uh, you do see places where. Uh, uh, part of this district has uh, a fa uh, thriving factory trade, so there are parts of the town where you see uh, acrid smoke coming out of chimneys, and uh, you can hear the sounds of machinery working, and uh, then there are, of course, the taverns and brothels that uh, are not subtle about their advertising. There are a lot of red lights around. It's still early in the morning, so the taverns are not that populated. Uh, but there are still the shops and the factories to think about. And you guys have directions to the Drunken Weasel Tavern where uh, where your target was last seen. Be backing up just a second, would I know uh, what types of services are offered in those locations where they've got the clothes hanging yeah. up? Uh, yeah, you definitely... A lot of these are advertising um, either uh, smuggling or burglary services or uh, illegal substances. Okay. You do see one spot that you think might actually be advertising a hitman. <laughs> That's really not subtle. Well, again, he only knows this because he has thieves can't. Uh, the yeah. rest of you have no idea what these clotheslines are for unless Flynn just flat out tells you. If I see some red lingerie, I'm going to know what that is. Yeah, well, I mean, that's not, uh, that's not subtle. <laughs> the Hitman one, they just have a... <laughs> Pirate flag. I, I'm guessing that prostitution is not an illegal trade here. That is correct. Setting, so. um, prostitution is legal, uh, but at the same time, there's a social stigma that comes with it. And, yeah. uh, you know... And especially this tier of uh, without uh, not having gay uh, an appropriate word for it, this tier of low class services would have a stigma for both performing and being seen accepting. Is this the kind of thing where, like in Amsterdam, well, it's legal as long as you're over eighteen, but this is the area you go if you want under eighteens? Uh yeah. Uh, there's definitely like eighteen is still the age of consent in this setting, and if you want less than that, uh. That's super illegal, and for what it's worth, Flynn, you don't see that advertised. All right, this got dark. Can we go to the tower? Yeah, let, let's <laughs> maybe swiftly move on. All right, um, unless uh, Flynn or anybody else is stopping uh, to say anything, unless he's just following directions. You yeah, know, Rhodes kind of... Uh, I wouldn't say he knows the way, but knows a way. I yeah. don't think you've no. ever been to this specific no. tavern, Rhodes, okay. but yeah. you have been around the area. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, uh, Rhodes could probably take us in the least dangerous path. Between Rhodes and Red, or excuse me, between Rhodes and Flynn, I don't think you'd have any immediate dangers on the road, no. Mm -hmm. Then let's go. All right. Okay. So, guys, going to head straight to the Drunken Weasel Tavern. Uh, I'm going to say it's around. Let's see. When did you guys leave? Around nine o'clock, or was it earlier than that? We got it up was at around six. nine, probably. Because you had to take a while for Flynn to wake up. So we'll say it's around nine thirty. So it's rather early to be entering a tavern, uh, but you find it. Uh, it is a. Uh, it's an. It's basically a hole in the wall tavern. There's nothing about it that would immediately stand out. Uh, you can see orange light coming from one of the windows with a uh, with a. Uh, really uh, tight cage weave over the windows to k prevent people from breaking in. Uh, the the sign above it, it just says the drunken weasel with a uh, really crudely drawn weasel that is kind of poking up outside of a uh, big stereotypical beer stein. Some good graphic design right there. Yeah. <laughs> graphic design is my passion. <laughs> <laughs> is there a... Is there someone behind the bar? 
in you the cabin can't, at all? Uh, you can't see because the uh, the windows are not the sort that allow one to easily look in. Oh, so, so we haven't even gone into the tavern. You haven't not gone. You're, you're, you're still outside the tavern I'm just at this go point. In. Okay, yeah. if everybody's just going to go in, then um, yeah, uh, you now now can I see someone behind the bar? <laughs> yes. Well, I was I was gonna stop Flynn for a second. Okay. Um, before they go in, Elizzie just kind of stops Flynn, and she's speaking in a hushed tone so no one else can hear. And she asks, um, "There's there's probably a slim chance that a uh, establishment like this keeps an actual ledger, right?" They, they they would, but it would be very very guarded. Either that, or uh, again, you you've been around the block in this kind of business before, uh, so. Uh, I mean, he, you know thieves can't, so you would know the basics yeah. of the trade. Um, they would either keep it very well guarded, or they would keep a fake one and then the real one elsewhere. Yeah, or keep a, keep one for the bar and keep a second one for the off-the-books stuff. Why would it be oh. off-the-books if prostitution is illegal? There, there's other stuff, too, that this type of establishment would... There, there is a clothesline above this place. There's nothing on it right now. Okay, um, she's she's just gonna reply, alright, well, if we can't figure out any information, there's a plan B for you, Sneaky Fingers. Let, let, let me just try, let, let me just try the, the the nice way first. Yeah, that's why I called it plan B. Alright, we good? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then I'm gonna walk in. Alright, everybody's inside now? Yes. Yep. Okay. Alright, so... There is indeed a man behind the bar. Um, this is an orc man, uh, skin that's somewhere between orange and green, turning a lot more orange up to his bulbous, flattened nose. Um, he doesn't have much hair, just a tuft of it in the middle of his head. That, and uh, he definitely he looks like he his nose has been broken multiple times. Uh, he currently has one black eye, and uh, the tusks that orcs typically have, one of his has been broken off. Um, he's wearing a sleeveless shirt with the, where this looks like the sleeves have either been torn or cut off very roughly, uh, and an ap a white apron that has been patched up many times. Um, he's behind the bar. Uh, looks like he might be focusing on something in the oven. Uh, he uh, glances up as uh, as you guys goes, come in goes, Oi, bit early, like you lot. Uh, let, let me let me try first, guys, and I and I walk up to him. Before we continue this, does anybody have exception uh, uh, objections to Flynn being the one to talk? Uh, Rhodes kind of does. Yeah, <laughs> that was like, uh, that was supposed out, to like... be a, that was supposed to be kind of a joke, but okay. Well, uh, Rhodes doesn't know Flynn that well. He's like, yeah, oh, yeah. No, I don't, I don't know if you're gonna fuck this up, but he's yeah. not gonna like. All right, so uh, let's say Rhodes and Flynn go up there at about the same time. Um, you actually smell a strangely pleasant smell, like uh, some kind of baking pastry. What is that? What is that? What are you are you asking that loud enough that the barman would hear? Yeah, I'm sniffing loudly too, like comedically loudy. Uh, he replies, "It's an apple pie." Now what? We ain't open yet. What do you want? Hey, I I just need to I I need to ask you something, and then uh quickly I'm gonna. Uh, tap out on the on the table and thieves can't no danger uh he seems to note the tapping and gives you a subtle nod and uh then he says all right well i gotta keep an eye on this but i'm listening what do you want i'm i'm looking for a friend of mine and i'm assuming because i've met uh gregon before i would know his face I would remember his face. Yeah, Gregan. Uh, and I will say that uh, Williams also gave you a, uh, a a description. Yeah, she did. But I, but I would remember it well enough to be able to use minor illusion to just show his face. Uh, you could do that. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll show I'll use minor illusion to show his face, and I'll say uh, I'm looking for a friend of mine. He might be in danger. Yeah, what's he look? Oh, and then he looks up and actually sees and goes, oh, uh, huh. <laughs> And he peers at it for a second, goes, nope, I ain't seen him. Uh, now get the fuck out. Uh, I'm really wait, 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 yeah, wait, 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 stop. So first of all, multiple people are, are calling for insight. Go ahead and roll that. Oh, I thought they were talking over me. No, they were calling for insight yeah. checks. Oh, well, Leslie doesn't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> can I do one too? You can. You have disadvantage. Oh, right. 
And I am not necessarily listing the mods on rolls I roll, so don't take that as, like, if you roll above that 16, that's not necessarily a success, and rolling below is not necessarily a failure. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it seems, he seems to be honest about that, and definitely wants you guys to get the fuck out. He's busy. Okay, Una walks up to the bar. Oh. Hi! So, my name's Una. I, we didn't catch your name. My friends were being very rude and not introducing themselves like they do ever. Uh, Alezi face palms. <laughs> Flynn is also face palming. He seems to be pointedly focusing on the oven and asks, What do you want? I already told you, I ain't seen your guy. Okay. So you haven't seen our guy. Has anyone else seen our guy? How the fuck should I know? Because, actually, do you even own this establishment? Are no, you I'm the fucking cook. Oh, what does it look uh, like? It looks like you're baking a pie really early in the morning. Yes, because we're gonna serve it later. Okay, well then, can I see uh, Una, the, please, the owner of the establishment? Pl Una, Una, stop for a second. <laughs> please stop for a second. I'm listening. Okay, I will take out five gold and put it on the table. He hears Are you the, sure you haven't seen him? He hears the clinks of coins and looks up. And you clearly have his attention. Are you sure that you haven't seen my friend? I ain't seen him. But then again, I ain't the type of guy who's supposed to see th see people. Uh, he holds up two fingers, and this is a uh, a pretty standard gang sign for go. Uh, this is going to cost you more. Understood. I will take out five more. He nods, um, and unless you prevent him from doing so. He will palm the coins and says, Let me talk to my boss. Eh, he might know a bit more about it. Uh, pockets the coins, says, Give me just a couple minutes. Pie's almost done. And Thank sure, you very much, sir. And sure enough, after a couple of minutes, a, uh, a, a, and he brings out uh, an apple pie that smells really good. Uh, and uh, let's see. I think everyone here, except for possibly, well, okay, Flynn and Una, you would you would need to roll history check. So roll a quick history check. This is not a high DC. So accept me and Flynn, or you want us to still roll it? I want Damn. you to. I want you two to roll. Oh, okay. Uh, Alezi and uh, and Rhodes will get this automatically. Cool. Okay. Seven. Yes. After a really great twenty-two. And that's what disadvantage does to you. Yep. Yeah, you might have got that perception too. Nope, my history still sucks. No, see, here's the thing: the DC was only like six, so I'll just give it to both <laughs> of you. Like, this is a fairly commonly well-known thing, but both of you are foreign enough that this might not be something you know. Um, the uh, orcs of Dalrock have a really well-established history of producing some really good cooks. So, yes, this guy's an orc, and he looks like your standard dumbass orc, but. He could, he, like, there's a history of these kind of guys being good cooks. So it's Guy Fieri. <laughs> I'm not going to acknowledge that. Okay, that's far. Uh, so, yeah, he as brings up... In, as an in-joke, Docs, does that mean Ugly John would be a, an orc? Moving on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he sets the pie aside uh, and uh, sets it uh, out on a table behind the bar. And he says, gonna let that cool. And then... While we're doing that, I'll see if I can find the boss for you. Thank you. We'd appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, heads into, he heads upstairs um, and past the bend in the stairs and to where he can no longer be seen. About I do take something seriously, guys. Hmm? I do take something seriously, guys. Yeah. You guys have a couple of minutes to communicate while he's gone. Uh, Alezi just goes, yeah, yeah, and she walks over to Flynn and hands him five gold. No, th that's fine. You don't need to. Hey, uh, we're doing this job together. There's no need for you to pay it all out of pocket. I Plus still have money. More money later. I still have money. It was only Rose ten. Rose surrounded everyone else and, like, starts scrambling through, like, the little bit of gold he has. Like, um, I, I can pitch some in as well. No, guys, it's fine. I still have plenty. This is, th this is my... This is my area. This is what I do. 
uh, as uh, you are having this conversation, you hear footsteps coming down from uh, from above. Uh, a pair of heavy footsteps for the orc, and then uh, a lighter pair for the boss. Uh, this is a this is a human man uh, with brown hair, pale skin, uh, very angular features. He's very a uh, very slim build. Uh, he has kind of a uh, pompadour styled hair, brown hair with uh, a thin beard and a well trimmed mustache. He's wearing a uh, tuxedo vest underneath a uh, dark red long coat with a matching pair of uh, silk trousers. He's wearing a pair of uh, practical leather boots and a similar pair of leather gloves, except you can see that the gloves have little claws on the fingertips. Uh, they seem to be decorative. He's carrying a uh, cane made of some sort of dark wood with an orb that looks like it might be amber uh, as its headpiece. Uh, he has a cigarette in his mouth, and there is a raven perched on his shoulder. He comes down the stairs and says, Well now, I've been told that you thought might have business with me. What is um, Yes. Uh, yes, sir. I am I am looking. We We are looking for a friend of mine. I am very interested in finding him. There is no danger to you or to him whatsoever. This is purely Well, there's no danger to me regardless. Dax, how old does this guy look? Uh, this guy looks like he would be uh, late 20s, early 30s. Of I, course. I, under, I understand that, sir. That was in no means, no way, a threat. I am showing you that we are safe. Uh-huh. Well, very well safe. What does this friend of yours look like? And minor illusion, minor illusion is a cantrip, so I use it again. Use it again, yeah. Yeah, and I show him the face of Gregon. Okay, um, he looks it over. Uh, no change of expression on his face. Uh, he exhales smoke through his nose and goes. So tell me, how do you know this guy? He he's an old friend of mine. I've I I knew I met him several years ago, and I I think I. I think that he might be in trouble, and I owe him, and I believe that I owe him to at least try to find him. And why do you think he's in trouble? He came to this area, and he has not been seen for several days. Who told you that? If we're being completely honest, the police told me that. Ah, well, I have nothing to say to people working for the police. We're not working for the police. Oh, bullshit. They, they, they might be, but I am hoping I want to find my friend, and I Bro don't give a shit what the police want. I roll, want my friend. Roll deception. It's not deception. Uh, okay, I want and my that, friend. In that case, persuasion. Persuasion. Eleven. All right. He gives you a critical look. Long pause as he's looking you over. A little hint, young man. Maybe if really all you care about is finding you. And I think you do. Don't talk about this. Now, tell me his name and... When, what you think his business here was. I don't remember every customer. His name is Grigon Stonekiln. The, the police think that he was here for prostitution, but we don't believe that. Now, why don't you believe that? Um, he, uh, he says as he pulls uh, a, uh, a stone slab out of his coat and uh, starts consulting it. Um, you would recognize this as a type of record-keeping device that uh, would be... Uh, tuned to a specific person, so only he would be able to read it. The, the facts just don't add up. Tell me how. I need to know what you know before I can tell you what I know. He's still looking through this, uh, s through this tablet. Una, can you, can you help me? <laughs> was that said out loud? <laughs> yes. What was the question again? <laughs> can you help me with the details? Oh, yeah. The dude so... is raising an eyebrow as you go for an ally. <laughs> so this guy like i don't know why but he's he decided to come all the way down here to go and try and find a prostitute but then there's no reason for him to come all the way down here because he down here from where here. from where that's a good question did we ever find that out <laughs> he's noble so i assume wherever <clears throat> he lives did you say that out loud, Rhodes? Yeah. Ah, see, there's what I needed. And he points to Rhodes, goes, ah, the nobility. 
Believe it or not, my humble little establishment does offer some services that the nobility might be interested in. Give me a moment. And he, uh, scroll, he uh, uses his thumb to manipulate the stone tablet, uh, scans through it, and goes, You said his name was Stonekill? Yes, that's correct. Hmm. Well, I do know a little something about him, but I'm not entirely certain why I should tell you is the problem. You see, we do value our customers' privacy in this establishment. I'm sure that what I have was enough to grease the palm of your 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 man here, but I doubt that what the entire party has would be enough. So instead, I would like to offer my services. I will owe you a favor. Any favor. Interesting. Tell me, boy, what can you do? I'm, I'm a decent thief. I'm decent with these short swords. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm clever in a pinch. He's looking to the others in the party to, val to validate these claims. Uh, uh, he uh, managed to nick something from Murdoch Metalmender, if that name rings a bell. Um, okay. Let me roll for him to see if he would know Murdoch. While you're doing that, I'll say Rhodes isn't doesn't know Flynn, so isn't gonna say anything. But keeps trying to find a spot to uh, speak up. Alessia has, like, uh, 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 has been very uh, um, intent on not speaking up till then. By the way. Okay. Um, metal Mender, Metal Mender. I know I've heard the name. I can't place a face to it. Um, he glances around. Uh, he does take a moment to look at Rhodes. You know, talk, talk. Talk, talk. That sounds like a goblin name. Of course not. Okay, I'm just checking because Tok Tok's a little shit and he pissed him off. Rhodes cuts him with, um, excuse me, pardon me for interrupting, but if Flynn here services do not satisfy, I, if I'm not too presumptuous in assuming mine would, I, as a paladin of the lover, <laughs> I especially work with, uh... I, I very quickly kick Rhodes under the, under the table. Are we at a table? <laughs> we're, we're at the bar. We're, we're at the bar. You get kicked subtly. Ow, 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 you kicked me. The glare that comes from this guy. Look, Are he's you... a half-decent thief, at least. Well, I'm also interested in what this one has to say, and he points the roads. Do, continue. I'm scared to now. Well, that's too bad. Uh, no, I... As you said before, you have prostitutes, and I can offer any healing services or such. Um, I, in my... As part of my work, I often come down to this area to provide free services of healing to working men and women. Well, if they're free, then I don't think your services are that valuable. But it could be good to have uh, a paladin of the lubber on call. Here's the deal. Uh, he brings out... Uh, he, he, he reaches into his coat again and pulls out a ring. Um, and he says, this is a branding ring. I will use this to place a mark upon each of you, and if I have need of your services, I will be able to use this mark to communicate with you. Now, this will provide me no control over your actions, but I do also have the ability to know your location, these marks. Is, is my friend's, is my friend's uh, inclusion in this uh, contingent on finding my friend? Well... I don't particularly care if you find your friend, but I can tell you what I know of them. But both no, no, I mean, I mean, is Rhodes is, is Rose's involvement in this? Yes, yes, this will be both. Of them. Are you sure, Rhodes? Hold up, how long? One favor, one task from each of you. I, I'm not. You, you need to think hard, Rhodes. I am. I'm not sure. I'm exactly comfortable with. Well, such then, an... then what? What can I do to make you comfortable? Like, are there? I'm sure there are certain things you would rather not do. Speak them now, and I will take that into consideration. I can't do anything that break my oath. And what is your oath? Uh, honesty, courage, uh, compassion, honor, duty, in I a see. few words. I see. The standard gooders of... Well, there are certain honest things that I will need help with on occasion. I think I can. All right. Uh, second question. Is it a permanent brand? I'm... Once, the t once the favor is done, I will dismiss it. It's not okay. so, I, it, the the Sorry. term of art is a brand, but it's closer to like a Hater? temporary tattoo, let's say. Oh, that's fine. 
There will be no pain in the application, and it will leave no scar, and once I am and once I have called in my favor, it will go away. Sir, I am willing to do absolutely anything that you need, but I would just request I would just request that you keep a promise to keep Rhodes honest. He's not as fucked up as I am yet. Ah, that yet is so important, my friend. Well, that is fine. I can do that. I can do that. Um, he uh, slips the ring on and uh, beckons the two of you forward. I step forward. All right. Rhodes comes forward, but where would you like the mark placed? I presume. I hold out my. I, I hold out my left arm. Uh, do you have long sleeves on? Yeah, I raise them up. Okay. Uh, he nods and places it uh, on your bicep. Okay, Rose. and like it, it's just a minor tingle, uh, no pain involved, but you do have a small mark that uh, looks like a kind, uh, kind of like a, a raven's head. It's maybe the size of a die. Okay, Rhodes is looking down, like at his armor, trying to figure out a piece of bare skin that's not. We can face. give we can give you a moment to remove your protection if you need, Knight. Uh, yeah, and Rhodes looks around the bar and just starts taking off his breastplate. I guess. <laughs> Rhodes, you're, just take your gloves off. What? Just take your gloves off. That's what I'm doing. Put, you can put it on the back of your hand. You don't need to take everything off to take your gloves off. Oh, I thought you said clothes. My mistake. <laughs> um, and he, try, he goes to put his breastplate black on and take off his glove. All right. Um, the man nods and uh, puts the mark uh, on the back of your hand. Mm. Very well. By the by, my name is Lionel. Who are you? <clears throat> I am My name Rhodes. is Flynn. My name is Flynn. I am Roadside Dune. How, how do you spell Lionel? Oh fuck, what is my last name? I didn't do it. <laughs> it's Rosayune. I fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> I've done dumber things, it's fine. How do you spell Lionel? Oh, L-I-O-N-E-L. Okay. Lionel. Now, as for my part of the bargain, uh, he pulls out the... He, uh, refocuses, rather, on the tablet and uh, says, So, among our services is an offer to arrange meetings with uh, very private meetings, you understand, with certain individuals. This one here wanted to see one called... Huh, I don't remember this one. The Rain Caller, he says. The Rain Caller? Yes, it's an odd one. I don't actually remember this one, This, but I have uh, many things to keep up with, so forgetting one is not that unusual. Um, Wait, did you, you don't remember setting up the meeting, or you don't remember the person? The person, the person. But I have, but there are many contacts, and I am not the only one who sets up these meetings. Can one must delegate. Is there, is there any knowledge check we could try? Um... Give me a second. Uh, just give me a straight intelligence check, if you want to know more. Alezi's favorite thing. Indeed. <laughs> hey. Wow. Lots of good rolls. 17. On, I haven't rolled yet. Oh, <laughs> Alezi got the best! <laughs> Alright, so... 11 for Una. 17. Um, oh wait, I have a plus I just two, wanna, I'm sorry. Uh, Alezi got a crit... Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I was about 20. to say, and then a net 20 on a Lezzy. Okay, so let's start with what everyone would know. Um, uh, from Una, basically Una, uh, you've heard this name mostly referred to in, uh, in Halonian mythology. Um, the uh, rain collar is a uh, rank within a tribe within Halalon, which is the desert nation to the east. And they were supposed to be shamans who would, you know, call rain when needed in the desert. Um, that's really all you know. So at this point, I need Una to mute. I, I did get a 13 because I forgot to add my modifier. Noted. You still Anything need else? to mute. Okay. Just double checking. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So everyone else, um, I will say that um, it's uh, also a position that is sometimes uh, referred to in Dalrock mythologies, and especially mythology uh, Dalrock tribes that are close to Hall alone. Um, these are very powerful spellcasters within groups that uh, inhabit arid regions, uh, and uh, they're also supposed to be skilled at healing and uh, minor sorts of fortune telling. Uh, do you guys have questions at this point? 
what counts as minor sorts of fortune telling? As in having omens, um, supposedly speaking to uh, the spirits for prophecy. Um, these will be uh, things like you'll have good luck today, or uh, the gods will be pleased if you plant crops here, or um, kind of tarot card reading kinds of things. They'll be very vague in their pronouncements. Uh, so, uh, I think crops in a certain place isn't very vague. Uh, well, okay. It can't, you're right. Um, but when, that's for also much bigger deal things for personal fortunes that they can tend to be vague. Yeah. All right. Uh, and at this point, uh, everyone but Alessi. All right. Uh, so here's the thing, Alessi. You've actually, um, spoken to someone uh, from Hull Alone who had came through Northwall who knew a rank caller. And the rank caller was a mummy. A type oh. of intelligent undead. Okay. So we found the connection. Yes. Uh, there is a connection to undeath here. Um, you don't know for certain that this is always the case, um, but the one time you have heard of a concrete example of a uh, of a rank caller, it was an intelligent undead. All right, so so I didn't I didn't meet a mummy. I met a guy who met the mummy. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions before I get everyone back in here? Did he say anything specific about what the mummy told him or his interactions with it? Um, he did not. Uh, he said that he did not often interact with the mummy itself. Uh, he apparently. Uh, the, the rank caller supposedly spoke through the tribe's leader and on, would only speak to that tribe's leader. Um, so he was a, a very, very, um, very private sort of individual, uh, is, the, is the impression you got, this rank caller. Right. Um, did Alezi get um, any like hint of fear when the guy talked about it? or um, Not fear, but certainly reverence. Okay, gotcha. All done? All right, everybody's back. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Red. Oh yeah, I'm here. Okay, wanted to make wanted to hear from everyone before we went on, uh, in case there were technical difficulties. Okay, so uh, right, you've heard the rain caller. Um, uh, so Lionel continues. The meeting was arranged at this address, and he gives you uh, a quick address, and if asked, he'll give you uh, directions to it. Yes, we ask for directions. And of course. All right. Uh, Lionel tucks the tablet and the Brandon branding ring into his pockets again and goes, Is there anything else? Do you happen to know why he wanted to meet him? We don't ask those kinds of questions. Just because you didn't ask, you didn't know. It does mean I'm not going to tell you. That's reasonable. I think you've been more than fair with the information you've given us. I'm glad you think that. I tend to agree. And I think we should be making our way out. I agree with that Yes, as well. we should. Very well. I will be speaking to you some other time. Thank you for your help, sir. Has the cook been there the whole time? Uh, the cook's been there, but he doesn't seem to be paying attention because he's making another pie. It looks like this one is going to be uh, cinnamon-flavored oh, okay. primarily. Una Wait, Josh, back cinnamon? The... <laughs> Wait, primarily. <laughs> Shitty ass pie? <laughs> it's going to be a lot of cinnamon in this. You don't know what else he's putting in it yet. Shut up. I don't cook. <laughs> but it turns back around to the bartender. Actually, can I get a piece of that apple pie to go? Two silver. <laughs> Fucking yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty expensive piece of pie, by the way. Uh, Uda has no idea. <laughs> okay. Uh, he cuts you up a piece of the pie, uh, hands you uh, a plate, a napkin, and a disposable fork. Wait, how big is the piece? Uh, it'd be, like, standard pie size. I'm not sure how to describe it. Um, I'm from Texas. Standard pie size is half the pie. Okay. Um, first off, what the fuck, Texas? Uh, <laughs> second off, bigger in Texas. <laughs> that's actually not true, but whatever. Um, I'm going to say it's about, like, um, somewhere between uh, a sixth or a fifth of the pie. Can I get one as well? Uh, sure. <laughs> Alessi is just rolling her eyes uh, impatiently, waiting for everyone to get their slice of pie. Lionel also seems unamused as he heads back upstairs. And so is Flynn, we are who thinks they should treatment. probably have already left at this yes. point. It's a very bad idea that we're having pie. All right, well, you have um, two of you have pie now. Sweet. Cool. <laughs> Una eats it on the way out, or starts eating it on the way out. It's good. 
Like, it's actually <laughs> quite good. Rhodes was going to save his, but seeing Uno open hers, he decides to join in. All right. It's Rhodes also finds it quite good. Hey, Lindsay, do you want to try some of this pie? No, thanks. Flip, we, pie? Can we please leave before we talk about this? Oh, we're, I thought we're we were. Out. I presume you guys are walking and talking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Flynn, pie? <laughs> no, thank you. Okay. All right. So, Flynn, find us a good place to talk. Uh, you find an un you can find an unoccupied alley pretty quickly. What's going on? We're gonna go over information. Oh. Oh, All none right. of his insight checked in. <laughs> so, um, Alezi's just gonna go ahead and scope out this empty alleyway. Just in case. That's fair. High. That alley is full of snakes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 21. I, I mean, other than the occasional stray animal and, uh, you know, rats and that kind of thing, the alleyway is empty. There's no humanoid life here. I mean, we, we have been asking around in a place where you shouldn't be asking things, so Leslie's just on guard. Yes. Again, it's actually empty. Okay. So, um, right, so nobody else has anything to say before Leslie starts? Wow, this is great pie. <laughs> <laughs> Make so a constitution sure. saving throw. No, I'm kidding. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> so, um, after checking out the alleyway, um, Leslie walks back over to the group. She's like, all right, so... Well, I think it's a little stupid to be uh, telling this guy that he gets favors from you two. Y'all did good. You got us some information. Good job. I think it's stupid that Rhodes did it. I think I'm it's not... stupid that you told him we got our information from the police. Yeah, yeah. that was really dumb. Uh, I, 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 I was th trying th not to talk. I think that he deserved our respect, and if we lied to him, it, it would have been worse because he would have found out. And then we would have paid the pipe paid the price twice over. I, I don't know a lot about these things, Flynn, but even I can tell you that was a creepy motherfucker and I wouldn't have told him shit. As m m bad of vibes that guy gave me, Flynn has a point. Honesty I, is always the best way. I don't agree with that point, but I'm not getting into that now. Um, so, um, it, it was called the Rainmaker, right, Docs? That's right. Raincaller. Raincaller. So, I mean, it's it's... It's a nuance in translation that wouldn't necessarily... Like, both terms are probably correct. Okay, so, this rain color. I've met a guy that saw one in our... Well, he knew of one in person. He told me quite a bit about it back in Northwall. The stories were uh, interesting, but uh, I think we found our connection maybe to this uh, undead rumor that our police friend was talking about. What do you mean? Uh, see... The rain collar was actually a mummy. It was a rather intelligent form of undead. Uh, you guys can make religion checks to know more about mummies. I told you there would be more lore checks. I told you. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go ahead and five, eight. Oh wait, Mom, history, eight. not religion. Yeah. Oh no, it was religion, wasn't it? He it was religion. religion. Yeah, he did say wow. Right, sorry, that well, was Wow, Leslie's rolling really good today for her knowledge rolls. Actually, you can still use that roll. It's the same stats. No yeah. What. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Flynn, you don't know shit about mummies. Um, so at this point, I need you to go ahead and deafen yourself. Una, you only know the basics. Um, they're a type of mummy that uh, arises in the desert. Um, you are understand that there's a type of mummification that doesn't result in undead, and you can only presume that the same processes that lead to uh, mundane mummification are also used to create undead mummies. Um, but beyond that, you don't know anything else. So at this point, I need you to muck death it. Alright, Alesian Rhodes, you both rolled pretty well, so... Um, you would be aware that mummies are a uniquely Halonian style of undead. Um, as already mentioned, uh, they come about as, from a mummification process that um, can also be used to preserve bodies without raising them as undead. Um, so, I mentioned previously, I believe, that undead have different... Uh, like, people view undead differently depending on where they're from, uh, and mummies are a special case. Uh, most intelligent undead are considered uh, menaces of the highest degree because they typically live by consuming uh, living creatures. Uh, live being in quotation marks there, of course. Uh, they, they typically have to consume life to continue existing. Mummies are a 
are no different. They still need to consume life, but they are often given positions of honor within Halonian society. Um, you will... So what typically happens is that any honored member of the of a given tribe will be uh, mum, uh, will be given the right of mummification when they die, and this will resurrect them in an undead form. This process takes decades, however. So usually, what happens is because Halalone Hol is a uh, place of constant warfare and turmoil. Uh, usually the tribe that produced the mummy will either no longer exist or have been forced to move on before the mummification process is complete. And so they're usually found by people from outside the tribe and then destroyed. But sometimes a mummification process can, gets through, at which point the honored dead are uncovered and rejoined the tribe in a place of honor, usually as advisors who uh, lend their wisdom and power to whoever's currently leading their tribe. Uh, you Typically, a tribe won't accept a mummy as a direct leader because the their philosophy is that leading the living should be done by the living, but they will still pr play a very important advisory role. Do you have questions? Um, do they have to... Oh, sorry. There's a dog so, barking. No worries. <laughs> this alleyway um, has a lot of dogs. <laughs> um, trying to make sure she's gonna stop. It's not very loud, so it's not a big deal. Alright, um, then I will just continue. Yeah. Uh, if I can remember my what my question was. Oh, right, so uh, do they, uh, carry out sacrifices for these mummies, or do they actually not have to, uh, kill to to drain life force away um so they don't kill necessarily but they often will um but what they do is they capture people from opposing tribes to sacrifice to them okay uh in desperate times where they cannot do that uh individual members of a tribe may either sacrifice their life completely to maintain the money or multiple people will allow the mummy to feed on portions of their life uh, how often do the mummies have to feed? I'm going to say with your results, you do not know that. Okay. Uh, does Rhodes have any questions? Nah. All right. Sounds like we're done. Yep. Welcome back. Yay. Woot. Okay. So, uh, information has been given. I don't remember where the conversation was before, so good luck, guys. Mummies. All right. So, um, Alezi continues, unless someone interrupts her. Like, so, mummies, they feed on living things, just like any other undead. But they may not necessarily kill whatever they're feeding on. There's a chance if this guy's trapped by this rain collar, we may still be able to save him. I'm I I'm not arguing with anything you've said, but does it make sense as to why he'd be trapped by this person? I mean he, he Rhodes looks around the group. I mean he set up a meeting with them. Well that doesn't thought... mean the meeting didn't go sour. A dog Cookie barks in the background. <laughs> Cookie cameo. <laughs> what do mummies do that if they're not going to feed off if they if they don't kill them? What do they do with them? Well, they feed off their energy, so they might be keeping them alive, so they have a sustainable food source. What like spiders? Uh, more like. Uh, ticks and fleas might be a useful comparison. Mosquitoes. There you go. <laughs> okay, and we just need to go in cautious. We don't have much more to go off of. Yeah, I mean, we we still don't know if the rain color actually has him or what went on. But as it is, though, it's the only lead we have. Exactly. The next step is to go to his dress and maybe find out what happened at that meeting. Agreed. All right, let's head out. All right, you guys head to the address then. I, I want to pull Rhodes aside first and say, "Good idea," because Rhodes has kind of been looking sullen. Ever since he finished the pie, and really, I think the excitement of the pie got to him, and he didn't really process a lot of shit back there. <laughs> I am begging you, literally begging, that you never, ever do that again. I'm not inclined to say no, but what are you asking? I don't- I am fucked up. I don't need to bring down someone with me, especially not someone as good as you. Rhodes gives him a look. He- Flynn, I don't understand your concern. 
we made him promise that he's not going to have me do anything against my oath, and as that much- That would have never come up if you hadn't fucking volunteered. Rhodes looks taken aback that he's being yelled at. I- you needed help. No, I don't. I don't. I- I- I'm fucked up. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happens to me. It doesn't. Gregon is a better person than I will ever be, and I, I was I was stressing because he knows me. But the truth is that he he deserves to live more than I do, and I walk away. Uh, uh, fine, the conversation went. Um, Elizzie stops uh, on the street when she noticed that the two weren't following them. And you, looked- you see me walk out, and I'm looking angry, and I just walk past you. Rose is just standing there with his empty pie container. <laughs> okay, um, Elizzie just kind of quirks a brow, uh, not uh, kind of curious, but not interested enough to ask what that was all about, and follows the angry half elf. All right, I'm think- gonna I'm gonna start heading in the direction of the address. All right, any more uh, any more drama before I move us forward? I I guess Rose starts walking again. <laughs> Cool. All right. So you follow the directions given and come to a uh, kind of a uh, crossroads with a large-ish open square uh, and a lot of buildings around it. These are mostly shops, uh, but they're all they're all closed at the moment. Uh, these are taverns that aren't even preparing yet. Uh, it seems to be this was this is a meeting spot at some points but right now no one is around and all the house all the windows are either shuttered or have no lights in them i would like to in- investigate the area excellent What's do you want uh investigation or perception uh investigation yeah. rolls um i'm gonna investigate but i'm Rhodes is going to stick by a lezzy portion of it all right Fl- flynn is specifically looking for a way in and where that's the first question. Yeah, I actually have another. It was an address. Did he say it was like on the street, or did he just say it was like a building, or did he give us that information at all? He just gave you a street number. And uh, all right, so everybody looks around. Uh, there's the well in the center of this meeting place. It's a rundown, broken down well, but uh, you, you could probably you're not even sure that the water from it would be healthy to drink. Um, looking around, each of you goes through. Um, and no one finds the number that you were given. Uh, it does not seem to exist. In fact, it seems to be skipped over. Uh, and it takes a while before anyone can figure it out. But eventually, Rhodes and Una notice at the same time, uh, along the side of the well, it actually has a number on it in, in the side. Oh, and that's wow. the number you're looking for. Ninja Turtles! <laughs> Who has a canary? What? <laughs> you you. The, I have a one in eight chance. Well. I have a one in eight chance of finding of getting an owl. Hey everybody! There, I think I found the number on this well. <laughs> yeah, over here. Okay, that's strange. I mean, it's stranger to wonder why they gave an address to the well. That is weird. <laughs> Rhodes looks around to see if the well has a mailbox. <laughs> Doesn't look is, like it. Do do I see thieves can't anywhere in my eyeline? Um, let's see. Uh, your investigation was a nine. Um, so you do see bits of thieves can't around. Um, there are definitely multiple clotheslines in the area, all of which are currently uh, bare, except for a single uh, a single towel that you think is advertising something similar to marijuana, which is weird because marijuana is actually legal here in Leyline. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it's definitely soliciting some sort of light drug. Um, but that's all you really see um, looking around. Alezi looks down the well. Rhodes uh, turns to... Oh, go ahead. Uh, okay, so Alezi looks down. You have no dark vision, correct? Because you're um, technically human in your sh- on yeah, your character that is, sheet. Yes, that is right. true. It's dark. Uh, uh, Ro- Rhodes turns to Alessi. Now the question is, were they meeting by the well, or were they meeting in the well? Let's see. It's a, it's um, a great yeah. it's a great spot out of the way for shady meetings down there. Yeah, yes, uh, it's, but it's not there... exactly inconspicuous to climb into a well. All right, all right. Um, Una, uh, 
Rhodes, is there any magic at work here? Can you sense anything? Uh, I have a thing for that. Um... Una, Una's looking down the well, just FYI, which I do have dark vision. All right, and it's uh, 60 feet, correct? Yeah. All right, so you two see the bottom of the well. Um, it's hard to tell from this distance, but it seems shallow. And uh, you do see what looks like uh, prongs for a really small makeshift ladder that lead down into it. Um, Alessi, uh, before she gets her answer, is going to grab a nearby rock or piece of wood somewhere by the well, if she can find one, and uh, cast light on it. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so you light up a, a loose piece of cobblestone and uh, drop it down in, I presume? Yep. All right, so you drop it in, uh, and it's, you'd guess, about 50 feet down, and uh, like I said with Una, it doesn't seem that deep. And you can also see uh, the light reflecting off uh, little metal pegs that make a makeshift ladder. Oh, like going down the wall of the well? Going down the wall of the well, yes. Okay. Uh, before anyone tries to actually go down there, I'm going to take my light crossbow and shoot one down. Make sure that's actually the ground. Um, did right. Alezi get her answer for the Arcana? No, because Una was looking down the well, and I don't know what Ruby said. Uh, she's asking um, you to cast Detect Magic, I think. I don't have Detect Magic prepared. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll cast Detect Magic. All right. Uh, roll Perception for me. Okay. Hold on, I gotta look at my first... I hardly ever... 13? Okay. Uh, yeah, you don't see anything magical going on. Can I roll two, though? I mean, you can, but you don't have to tech magic going on. Oh, haha. Jokes, never mind. It doesn't look like there's anything did, down there. Did my, did my crossbow bolt actually hit the floor? Yes. Um, okay. it, it, it hit the water first, but it went far enough through that you do, you do see the crossbow bolt hitting the floor. Okay. Arrows and bolts don't travel well through water, but it, it's very shallow. Your, it seems like the floor was making me nervous. So who's going down first? I will. I go down the ladder. All right. Uh, so you go down the ladder. Make a dexterity. No. Um, <laughs> one day that that will that I will continue that and be serious about it. Um, so the pegs are not comfortable to climb down, but they're also not difficult to climb down. So you're able to get down to the well, and uh, the water is uh, about shin deep. Uh, you uh, let's see. Do you have dark vision? Yes. All right, so you look around. You have the usual uh, large chamber that uh, is supposed to contain water. Um, there's not very much in here. And you also see uh, mildew and moss on the walls. So uh, you wouldn't drink this water without boiling it, basically. Um, but you do also see a, uh, a spot where you, it looks like a bit of brick has fallen out of the wall. And uh, you can see a very faint light coming from the other side of it. Is um, the rock that she dropped still in there? Yes, know, and it's light, light, light. yes, and it's still glowing. Okay, so you can see it kind of through the water. Yes. Uh, let let me take a step or two closer to that hole in the wall where the brick is, and okay. just lightly touch it. Uh, touching the hole in the wall. The loose brick, I guess. Oh, the uh, it's a brick that's fallen out and is like it's a hole in the wall. That you can see a little light coming through. Okay, um, I'll, t I'll, I'll not touch the actual hole, but I'll touch the wall. All right. It's a brick wall, kind of wet. Okay. Not putting my face right up against it, but like like a foot away. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to see if I can look in that hole. Uh, you def like, There's definitely a passage behind it. You see a uh, glowstone, barely still powered, that is... Uh, embedded in the wall behind it and you can see a bit of a path that continues down um, it seems to be doing a very lazy spiral and going downward so you can't see very far into this hallway okay and everything else around me is solid wall it seems to be if you want okay. to know more perhaps you would do an investigation check sure why not how's it look down there Flynn are you dead <laughs> 15 Fifteen. Okay. Um, you do notice a couple of loose bricks, and uh, eventually you see uh, like a scratch mark on one of them. So there are three loose bricks in total that look like they might 
actually be hiding uh, mechanisms of some sort. And one of them has a single scratch mark that looks like something very powerful scoured part of the stone. Are there any traps, Flid? Uh, Are you dead? Uh, I'm, I'm fine. I'm just, just wait a second. Just I'm looking around. A lot. I'm trying to figure out what he's doing. I'm fine. I'm just looking around. Just wait a minute. Uh, I, I'd like to touch where that scratch mark is. All right. You touch it. Uh, if if you want to press it, then that's the next step. Because just just touching it doesn't seem to do anything. Okay. Um, I'll press it. All right. Uh, make a dexterity saving throw. I am not joking this time. <laughs> okay. Ten. Uh, you do not have disadvantage on saves. Oh right. Uh, but it's still, still a ten. It's still ten. That was the first 10. one you rolled. All right. Yeah. Uh, so a. Uh, Foul-smelling liquid sprays out of the wall straight into your face. Do you scream, Flynn? No, but... Um... You take 20 acid damage. Oh! oh. Okay, okay. It, wait, but, airborne wait, wait. acid? But, but wait, before, before we get on that, um, I would also like to say that with all the talk of um, mummies and it, the little drama with Rhodes earlier, I have been on the verge of throwing up. Flynn has been on the verge of throwing up, and I think he should have to make a con save to... Yeah, you know what? If you want to, go ahead and make a con save. Uh, uh, I don't like the amount of liquid going down here in this well. <laughs> and I, I, can, I can see him at the bottom, right? Uh, we can, you can, we can all see him. You can 16. see... You can barely see him. He's deep enough down that you can't, like, see his head, but you can see his I legs need, moving around. I need to know if Alezi, like, heard the spray, and if it was airborne, or if it was, like, actual liquid. All right, so several things are going on at once here. Um, so, Flynn, yeah, you get a big batch of acid straight in your face. First of all, I rolled anomalously well on those damage dice. So, yeah, uh, like it gets right up in there. Um, you, uh, you, you can actually hear it sizzling. And I'm going to say that with a 16 con save, you're not throwing up, but uh, like you're going to cry out in pain from that. Uh, like, it's not, you know, like, that's not something you just take and deal with at this level. Uh, above, you see Flynn, uh, you see, you hear a kind of a hiss sound above, and then you, uh, hear Flynn cry out and kind of reel in pain. Rhodes is heading for the okay. ladder. Okay, so, well, um, Alezi, um, is heading for the ladder as well, and she grabs the gas mask that she has. That's right. Um, from the north wall. Um, attacks uh, from the gnolls, and she puts it on and kind of pushes Rhodes out of the way. Rhodes um, pushes back. I'm a healer. Let me go. Do do not do not touch that wall. Do not do not touch that wall. Rhodes is still heading for the ladder. If we need to roll initiative to see who gets down there first. All right. Yeah. You go you can it. come down here, but do not touch that wall. We're in bullet time. There's no way he has enough time to say this. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so detect magic is a concentration spell. Did I? I'm presuming until we do something else, uh, uh, until we do something else, you are concentrating on it. Okay. Did I, I notice? Did I say anything when it went first. off? <laughs> okay, I heard several. There are t multiple people talking at once. What was that, Una? Uh, did I sense anything when that wall went off? Let's see. No, that was a mundane mechanism, so there wouldn't have been any magic. Okay. All right. So what was that for, Alessi? I think Alessi got there first. It was an 18 over a 3. Yeah, so Alessi will elbow her way down uh, faster than Rhodes. Wait, are uh, we both on the ladder then? <laughs> but no, I, got to the ladder first, I think. Yeah, I, I'm, I will say that Alessi got there first and is first down. Yeah. Um, but Rhodes is directly behind. Um, you get down there and you see that Flynn's face is fucked. He looks like... Uh, like an it's an acid burn. Um, you can see blisters and uh, redness and spots spots where the skin is burned away. All right. So she's she's immediately going to like um, wrap her arms around his, like putting his shoulders in a lock and drag him away from that wall as uh, much as she can in the well. Uh, Flynn, are you resisting this? No. Okay. All right. So you drag him away from that wall. All right. Um, so you I can you can, can see. see his face better. Yeah, uh, you can see the brick that he pressed uh, because there's uh, an acrid, foul-smelling, uh, brownish liquid seeping out from its seams. Do not touch that. Yeah, yeah, I got it. 
Is Rhodes down there yet? Yes. All right, Rhodes is going to head over and start checking out um, Flynn's wounds. All right, well, uh, his face is badly burned, but there doesn't seem to be any other uh, injury. Uh, but it is it is worth saying that that injury would like, would, th- most people would have died from that. Yeah. Um, how much is Cure Wounds going to... I believe it's 1d8 plus your charisma. Yeah, it's not a lot. But I'm going to do it anyway. Shit, I gotta do sappy shit. Um, <laughs> so Rhodes is gonna. Unless he dragged him to a back wall, right? Yeah, she dragged him as far away from that wall as possible. Um, so Rhodes is just gonna kind of grab Flynn's head and like bury a kiss in his hair, hair to heal him. All right, avoiding touching the acid. Yes, of course. I presumed as much. They tried to wipe it off. Right. Uh, I mean, you've got water all around. Maybe that would help. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Flynn, you heal seven HP. Uh, the acid seems there's still acid. There's still liquid on his face, but it seems to have lost its potency, so it's not doing lingering damage. Um, right. And uh, so the healing uh brings down the blistering and restores some of the burned skin. What was that? What just happened? Um, Alezi goes back over to the wall. Uh, now that Rose is down there and taking care of her friend, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and it, it's just looking it over, um, seeing where the acid came from and all that, but she's not touching anything. Okay, um, you can definitely see the uh, acid where the acid came from. You do see the scratch, but the uh, wall has actually like there. You don't see that it was a raised brick or anything. It looks pretty much flush with the rest of the wall, except for the scratch. Huh. Alessi, what is it? It's a trap. Yeah. I and you didn't the, uh... check for those? That's what I was doing. By activating it? Hey, guys. Shh. Uh, and I will add that everybody else can see the hole in the wall with the glow through it at this point. I think maybe he just pressed the wrong brick. Uh, roadsides and starts running his head. Flynn, you can't you got to not rush ahead like that. Um, now what? that uh, it, it appears to be just liquid, um, takes off her gas mask. All right. What's Una up to? Una's still just looking down there going, well, what the shit? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> um, Alessi walks, uh, walks back into the light looking up at Una. It's like, might as well come on down, join the party. That depends on whether or not we're going to, somebody's going to trip another trap and you're going to drown. Look, we got to... Find a way in a, any way if possible. So maybe you can get down here and help. Fine. And then Una Una makes her way down. Um, she looks over at Flynn uh, to see how well his face is healing from that kiss. It's there's still a lot of red and some minor blistering, but uh, it's like the worst of it seems to have been healed. Do you need anything? You got a potion or something? Yeah, I've got potions, and I'm gonna... I, I was already planning to take one, I was just looking up how much it was... It's, uh, 24 plus 2, I think. Yes. How, how bad are you on HP? Oh, Rose turned to a Lezzy. What he needs is to wait for the rest of us. Look, shit happens. We just gotta take care of it now, and move forward. How, how are you doing on that, Scott? 17. Because if you want to take a short rest, I also have my song of rest. Maybe we should see if we can get into the next hall first, because I don't like it in here. We should probably um, use your song of rest when we actually all need rest. Fair enough. I'd like to make an investigation check now that I'm down here. Okay, roll for it. Yeah, check investigation. Oh, an eight. Uh, other roll than sock today. yeah, you're not doing great. Um, other than the brick that obviously triggered the trapper earlier with its uh, brackish liquid coming out of it, you don't see anything. I, I point to the I point to the bright hole in the wall and I say that is probably the way to go but I'm just not sure that it's safe to go through that wall. The the hole is only, is like, enough to stick an arm through. Yeah, but I'm sure it... Just want to be clear. Yeah. I, fl- You're Flynn saying is, try, Flynn not is thinking to try that, and break it down, right? Flynn is thinking that it either opens or breaks down easily. Are but, you? But he's not sure that it's safe to do that. Well, Alezi asked if that was what he meant. Yes, but but I feel like there's more to it. Well, if I can't break it down, I'm kind of useless here. Flynn, is there any way that brick was the correct way to go and it was just trapped for safety measures? No, I think I think that was uh, I, I think that was to fill the room with. I think that was what that was for. All right. In case of intruders. 
can can you make an actual in- trap check, Scott? Uh, that would have been the investigation check already. Okay, I didn't hear him do that. He he, he made an investigation check to uh mess with to find the bricks, and I was uh, including the trap roll with that. Okay. Oh, Lizzie's just grumbling. Oh, I really wish I could just break it down when she walks back over to see if she can see anything. Rhodes is sitting you, there. You, you can. I'm just saying it might happen to you as well. Something like that. Rhodes is sitting there trying to go, calm down. He got really steamed at Flynn getting hurt. A Lizzie definitely doesn't find anything. Nope. <laughs> if, if our only concern is whether or not it'll trap another... Tr- it'll set off another trap, I could always just blast it and see what happens. But anybody who might be down there is definitely going to know we're here. I That's think, a really bad idea. I think if anyone's going to be breaking it down, I should probably do it. I mean, I can do it from a distance. But it'll be way louder. Yes. But it's going to be loud even if Alezi does it. We've been being loud since we got here, guys. Is there no way to take it brick by brick? Uh, try. Oh, actually, maybe. Uh... Yeah, I have, I think, doesn't Mage Hand let me, like, move things? Only if, to a limit of five pounds, I believe. Uh, these are... are more than five pounds. Yeah, these are, these are big, big bricks. The kind that you would make a well out of. It's still probably, like, maybe tops four pounds. I don't see a weight on it, actually. And, um, could she just use it to see if they budge? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily moving. Well, how heavy bricks are. The, like these are big cinder bricks. They're not the little oh, red okay. bricks that you make rooms th- that you make buildings out of. These are big bricks. I was thinking, I was thinking like medium-sized cinder bricks, but you're making it sound like they're large. Yeah, these, bricks. yes, that's what I just said. These are big bricks. Um, they're th- you're not going to be able twenty-eight pounds. Yeah, uh, you're not going to be able to move the individual bricks with Mage Hand. Although, if you want to interact with the hole in the wall uh, with Mage Hand, that is perfectly acceptable. And also, just striking in now that they are talking about Mage Hand, <laughs> yeah. Flynn could have pushed that button with his own Mage Hand. He could have. Yes, he could have. <laughs> yeah, he could have. <laughs> and that's oh, yeah, the right. point of the rogue's that. Mage Hand. <laughs> <laughs> that is explicitly the point of it. <laughs> Flynn, um, did you see anything else before you touched the brick? I saw one more loose Two. brick. Two more. In, including the... There were three bricks, one with the scour and then two others. Okay, and then and the, d- that does not include the hole in the wall. That does not include the hole in the wall, no. Okay. Was the, was the one with the scour the one he pushed? Yes. Okay. So the, there are two more loose bricks. They're in there. And there's this way, which might be the way to go, but also seems incredibly obvious as the way to go. All right, well then... Guys, if you don't have a better solution, I'm going to use Mage Hand to see if I can just push the brick. Yeah, sure. Elizabeth just kind of puts her gas mask back down. (laughs) (laughs) And Flynn backs up as far as possible. I thought Flynn was still on the ground. He was never on the ground. He was, um, I I think, but yeah. I think we all uh, back up a good amount. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Could could I, like, stand on the ladder and cast (laughs) it? Yeah, sure. (laughs) Although it's worth noting that you have to kind of drop down to get into the well, and there's no obvious ladder to get back up to that ladder. Oh shit! We're I guess we're in the uh, well then, guys. Yeah, uh, it, it, you would need like you could possibly work out something where uh, like Alezi boosts people up and then people help Alezi up, but uh, like getting out will not be a trivial thing. Good thing this well has an address because we live here now. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, crap. Hold on. I actually might have a better solution. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm looking something up I didn't think of until just now. Good solution. Knowing your shit is important. It's true. Okay. Never mind. Um, okay. Then I will cast Mage Hand and just try and, like, lightly push the... Oh, I don't know. Just put... It's there... gonna go ahead and try and push one of the bricks. Okay, there are two bricks. One of them higher and one of them lower. Which one do you push? Um... How high is the lowest one? Uh, the lowest one is like uh, waist height, and the highest one is about face height. I'm going to do the waist height then. All right, so the lower one? Yeah. Okay, um, I need Flynn to make a dexterity saving throw as a nozzle opens up directly but No. <laughs> okay, so you uh, press the lower one, and um, there's a grinding noise, 
as the wall that uh, had the hole in it opens up. Uh, the There's a section of wall that kind of slides down into the floor. Question, during all this, are we, like, in standing standing in water? You're standing in, like, uh, like shin deep water it's not deep water okay so when the when the door goes down the water doesn't just like kind of push push that way uh the door doesn't go down far enough to uh release much water a little it go the water level goes down a little bit but not much um okay. and uh you see uh, a hallway beyond the door um as i said before it's uh it it has a very gentle winding motion and seems to be descending. And you see uh, the glow light that you were seeing before uh, flickering at this point, uh, embedded in the wall. Uh, there, the door would have to... You'd have to kind of step over uh, a ledge where the secret door was. Okay. After you guys. Um, Alessi's gonna lead on if no one stops her. Rhodes is gonna go behind Alessi. Una offers uh, to help. Flint over the ledge just in case. I can do it. I can All do right. it nine times. I just don't want to be the first one to step in that room. Una takes us through, then I guess. All right. So the marching order is uh, Una Rhodes, or not Una, a Lezzy Rhodes. <laughs> Una Flynn. Shut up. Flynn uh, Una. Flynn Una. Okay. Yeah, so Una's, Una's taking. The, okay. Cool. So. Uh, it's another musty hallway, uh, and after that first glow lamp, uh, there is no more lighting as you round the bend and start, uh, going very gently downward. I presume that somebody's going, like, uh, Alessi's yeah. going to light something up. I've got light, too, so um, one of us she, can... She grabs the, uh, rock that she had already lit up. Okay. Sure. So you have so you've got that light, and as you descend, you see where there are other glow lamps that have run out of power. Uh, continuing downward, the smell is of decay at this point. Uh, it's like uh, it's kind of a swampy smell. Uh, it's a lot of moisture and a lot of something rotten. Um, like mildew. Uh, uh, more powerful than mildew. Oh. And Lizzie had put her gas mask back down, so she's smelling herbs and spices. That's correct. <laughs> Everyone else, you smell shit. Um, <laughs> you're heading down, and it seems like it's you're down maybe two stories. It's a, a sense of direction is difficult to uh, keep at this point because you're underground. There's no uh, landmarks you can use, and it's not entirely clear how much you've twisted around in this. Um, but you uh, eventually come to an open chamber. It's about 20 feet by 20 feet, not a huge room, uh, with a 10-foot high ceiling, uh, domed, of course, so that it's structurally sound. And uh, it looks like a cesspool. And you can see, so like, there's brackish water at the bottom. Um, it is filled with uh, mud and all kinds of other stuff that you probably don't want to think about too much. And you can see what looks to be a very, very large bones from some kind of animal on uh, at the side, uh, kind of brushed up onto the left wall and left in a heap. Can we roll knowledge uh, to see what kind of animal this was, maybe? You can certainly try. Uh, I would ask what knowledge, but... Would see, you, need, you, need, you might want to get closer to it to investigate it, and then that will, uh, that will tell you. Um, during this time, do I still have, uh, Detect Magic? Yes. Do I sense anything all the way down? I'm glad you asked. So, for future reference, extra senses like Detect Magic and that kind of thing are something that you need to focus on to, uh, to actually have. So, you need, like, I can't just respond to that because I have enough going on, quite frankly. So, I need some help to, like, I need you guys to remind me that you have that going on. So, uh, yes, you do see sense some magic going on. And before anybody actually goes up to investigate it, I will give you time to announce that you sense, uh, some some lingering necromancy energies going on. Well, I was going to say uh, I was going to use Divine Sense. Ah, okay. Remind me the stats on Divine Sense. Um, you open up your awareness. You know the location of any celestial fiend or undead, with, undead within 60 feet of you that is not behind total cover. You also know the type, um, but not its identity. Same radius you 
Detect the presence of any place or object that has been consecrated or desecrated. Okay, so no places or objects that have been consecrated or desecrated, no uh, celestials and no fiends, uh, but you definitely sense a skeletal undead somewhere nearby. Um, yeah. Rhodes is going to announce to the group, uh, be careful, I sense undead nearby. I definitely said something magical too. Uh, Leslie was walking towards the skelly and immediately stops. All right. <laughs> You don't see any other exits in this room. It looks like it's just a cesspool with a skeleton in it. Is the ske You said the skeleton was up against the wall? Yeah, it's kind of in a heap up against the wall. Well, right. no mummies, unless we need to drain that. No, in my luck, we probably have to go that way, past the skeleton. Why didn't you go and say hi? <laughs> Agreed. Undead really, really aren't my thing. Do you want to sit this one out? I'll, I'll back you up if shit happens, but... I don't want to go near that thing. That's fine. You can keep your distance. It died once. It can die again. So what are you doing? I think the three of us are approaching it. All right. Alezzi's like, uh, guard up. Yeah, Alezzi's got her shield up. All right. So everybody, I'll, I'll stay. I'll stay behind, but within striking distance if shit starts. Uh, when you say within striking distance, like that's melee for you, I think. No, I, I mean like in. And I could get up there in my turn distance. Okay, so like 30 feet-ish? Yeah. Okay, uh, what are you doing, Una? Hold on, I'm looking at the spell. <laughs> 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 this uh, is why I hate playing magic users. I was Dang. like, wait, I think I might have something for this. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what it is. Uh, What's the spell? I could try and help you. Um. Well... I was trying to figure out what prestidigitation was. Uh That's not going to be useful yeah. here. Prestidigitation yeah. is minor spells, uh, stuff like yeah. cleaning up and uh, flavoring food. It has no ba no practical applications. Hey, My flavoring food is pretty fucking practical. And, and, and no combat practical applications. No, yeah, that is so fall off if you uh, fall in the cesspool. If, uh, if you try to make <laughs> prestidigitation useful in combat, I will end you. <laughs> What if the monster's just angry because its food was unflavored? <laughs> I will end you. Uh, well, well, part of the problem is I don't have um, my 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 weapon, uh, my magical weapon. I don't, apparently, I never put the spells from that on here, so I was just double checking what those were, and so none uh, of them are useful. So I guess I am bringing up the rear and glancing behind every once in a while. Okay. Okay, so each of you uh, walk into the cesspool. Uh, it's, uh, let's see, so uh, Alessia and Rhodes would be first, I would presume. Mm -hmm. You immediately discover that it is deeper than you thought, right up to your knees. Ew. Uh, squish. Uh, Foul-smelling uh, and difficult to walk through. Um, okay, as, as soon as Una sees that, she's stopping. She's not stepping in that shit. Yeah, I figured as much. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yep. As soon as you step down, the bones begin shifting. I'm going to say that because you guys all have, uh, like, got ample warning about this, each of you gets a surprise round. Cool. Hey, You want us to go ahead and roll initiative? Uh, we'll roll initiative after the surprise round. You guys can do this in whatever order you like. Okay. Uh, I want to cast Entangle, then. Am I within 90 feet of it? Yes, easily. Okay. Um, the room is only, like, 20 by 20. And, oh, uh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, the the skeleton's, like, on the opposite wall. Okay, then the skeleton's gonna have issues because it's a 20-foot square. Alright, cool. And they have to make a strength saving throw or be restrained. Gotcha. Give me just a moment. Okay. What's the DC? Um, it's my spell save DC? And that's correct. Uh, so it's 13. Well, he makes it. Uh, so, um, you see... So, you cast your spell and tendrils of some sort of I'll just say it it looks like liquid shit is attempting to wrap around this skeleton through the water and uh, it's shifting and taking uh, its shape and it seems to just break through them no problem Okay, and then we I'll, establish mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll presume that you left enough room for the others to approach it yeah okay now what okay. were you asking we established that whenever I use my, my bandor um, it still counts as me using a spell slot, right? 
Uh, no, it counts as you concentrating on it if it's a concentration spell. Um, you have to continue playing it, but the Bandalore itself provides the spell slot. Okay, but it would only be the one spell slot for the Bandalore, right? It has each. It has one of each of the spells. Yeah. Okay. So that's like that's it. It didn't work, so I can't use it again, right? That's right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Who's next? That also means I just drop detect magic. Yes. Okay. Unless you just don't want to concentrate on entangle, I'll let you do that. Well, he um, already made a save. I don't think it works. I don't think it. I don't entangle think is I a continuous effect. If entangle is a continuous effect, he has to save again next turn, I believe. Um, Alezi is uh, using this opportunity to actually uh, look over her foe and uh, think before acting for once, and uh, she's gonna cast True Strike. Okay. So uh, she will gain advantage on her first attack. Uh, next turn. All right. Um, while you're focusing, uh, it seems to be forming into a humanoid shape. You recognize this as some sort of giant or ogre? Oh boy. Um, can I take my surprise round then? Go for it. Oh, I was thinking it just. Oh no, I've got a javelin. I'm gonna throw my javelin then. Okay. Throw it. Javel. That hits. Is one d six plus three piercing. Not a lot, but okay. All right. It's the start. All right, so the javelin kind of hits its rib cage, and you see it get kind of tangled up. It seems to have scratched a bit, but the the creature does not seem terribly bothered by it. Uh, finally, Flynn, what are you up to? Um, I'm gonna say that I'm not part of the surprise round because I am surprised because I hate undead. Okay, uh, that's up to you. All right, in that case, I need everybody to roll for initiative. Okay. How do we roll initiative again? One d twenty plus your initiative modifier, which should just be your dexterity modifier. Um, I got a nat twenty. Jesus. <laughs> All I, right. Uh, true strike. Uh, really helped. I don't have disadvantage on this, right? Correct. Actually, I think you might, but whatever. Uh, the the deal is that the skeleton rolled a uh, rolled a two total, so you guys can just act in whatever uh, order you like, <laughs> and it'll go last. <laughs> okay. But Leslie's still first. <laughs> yeah, if we're going by the roles, then it will be um, Alezi, Una, Flynn, and Rhodes. Rhodes. It's almost exactly the order we went in the surprise round. <laughs> All right, so um, Alezi is going to run up and strike at this thing with her battle axe. All right, you have advantage. Oh my god! Uh, that that's that's karma for rolling so well so far. You still hit. <laughs> yes. Uh, I still hit. Oh. Yes. Okay. Undead are not known for their high AC. Twelve damage. All right. So your axe hits home and takes out a couple of ribs. And uh, for my bonus action, I'm going to uh, go into rage. You could have done that before your attack if you wanted to. I know, but I had already stated that I was going to attack when I thought about it, so okay. I wanted to be fair. Works for me. Who's next? Una, I believe? Yes, do uh, Eldritch Blast. Roll it. Again? Okay, remind me, because I haven't done attack in a while. It's 1d20 plus your spell attack modifier. Spell attack. Two, uh, 22. Easy hit. I find mm -hmm. it handy just to write your spell attack in your weapon type. You might, there. yeah, you might as well. Just so I... Just so you know what your... Yeah, so you don't have to look Attack at the next is. page. That makes sense. Okay, well, I have it on side by side, so it's really not a big deal to pull it up. Anyway, um, uh, roll for damage. Okay, hold on. It's a uh, 1d10 force damage. Seven. It's a seven. All right, so... Uh, Wait, bonus hmm? action? Bonus action, go ahead. I have uh, used my bardic inspiration on uh, Alezi. All right. Do you want to describe it, or are we just going to let that roll? I'm just going to let that roll. Okay, fine. Alezi, you are inspired somehow. And uh, meanwhile, the blast hits the creature in its skull. Uh, you see multiple teeth break away, but who cares? It's a skeleton. Uh, what <laughs> dice is that inspiration at this level? It's a uh, 1d6. Okay. And I think I only have one. Yep. Uh, oh, you, should, you have a number equal to your charisma modifier. I actually think it's level. I'll, I'll, find, I'll find out. Don't worry yeah, about double check it before your next turn. I know it's more than one. All right, so that was Una, so next is Rhodes. No, me. Oh, I'm sorry, Flynn. Yeah, uh, so it should be within 30 feet of me, right? Because I made sure to try to keep yes. it that way. 
But yes. you also said it's difficult to range, so do I need to dash to get to it? You can get to it with a, with a regular movement. Okay. I'm going to take a deep breath, and I'm going to get right up to it. Okay. And because Alessi is there, if I hit, I get sneak attack damage. That's right. So two normal hits, That's because right. I'm terrified, and I just want to hack at it. Okay. Roll them. 11 and 8. Those will both hit. Okay. 3d6 plus 3. All right. 25 total. Uh, no, that's not 25 total. Um, so it's 10. Oh, yeah, I don't get, I don't get sneak attack on the second one. That's right. Or your plus yeah. three. The plus, the offhand is only going to be a short yeah, one. Yeah, six. sorry, 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 sorry. It's okay. It's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, no yeah. big deal. So 10 and five. So 15 total. All right. So you're hacking off, like, it's hard to really sneak attack something that doesn't have an anatomy, but you manage to find a way by stabbing into one of its vertebrae, which uh, causes it to shake unsteadily for a moment as it's still forming up. Uh, the next one, you just swing at a rib and put a big chip into it. Uh, but that's all that happens for you. Next is Rhodes. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna just do an attack. Not get anything fancy. No spells, I don't think. Alright. Let me try. Let me... Let me take a look. We haven't, we haven't gotten to fight anything in so long. <laughs> Rhodes has never fought anything. It's, it's at, with us. Know. with In this campaign. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to cast Bless, actually. Uh, that's a bonus action, right? Uh, one action. All right, so that would be in place of your attack if you did that. That's fine. All right, so who are you blessing? You can bless up to three creatures of your choice within range. Okay. So are you... So are you blessing everyone but you? Yeah. Okay. All right. So everyone else is blessed. Whenever you roll a, uh, let's see. Do you, I can read it. Okay. I mean, I've got Whenever it up too. Makes Go. an attack roll or a saving roll before the spell ends. The target can roll a d4 and add the number rolled to the attack roll or saving throw. Hashtag blessed. No. So you can roll All right. That's your. Th I'm going to count that as your one pun for the session, even though it's not a pun, <laughs> because fuck Dang, you and fuck that. <laughs> So you can roll that after you roll if you fail. I mean, you roll. There's the. There's no reason not to roll it. Okay. It's not something no, it's that gets expended. You roll it every time. You roll a an attack roll or a uh, saving throw. Okay. So All right. Does that mean that Alezi can use that on top of Bardic Inspiration? Yes. Yes. The, uh, that will stack with Inspiration. Okay. And that's on attack rolls. And saving throws. Okay. All right. So anything else from uh, Rhodes? Uh, no. I don't think I can do anything with my bonus action. Alright, so, uh, Rhodes, uh, pulls out a holy symbol and gives a short chant, and a, uh, soothing light fills the room, inspiring your allies. Uh, and now it is the ogre skeleton's turn. As it finishes forming up, uh, it, uh, it's just dripping with this vile substance, and it, uh, actually... As it finishes forming, it sweeps its hand through the water and sends a gigantic wave of filth over everything in the room. Uh, I uh, I think, uh, uh, let's see, the question is if Una's in range. I'm going to say that, Una, you are just out of reach of this. Um, I need everyone else to make constitution saving throws. Um, Does my gas mask affect this? Uh, your gas mask will give you advantage on it, but after this it is ruined. Until you get it cleaned up, so you get okay. one time one time advantage, but you need to it has to get cleaned up at this point. Um, I you, will. You said you said con con save, yes. Yeah, and uh, we can add that four. One d four, yes. Yeah, twenty one for me. All right, so Flynn and Alessi are able to shrug this off. Like you're covered in shit water now, so it's not fun, uh, but you're able to get around it. Let's see. Unfortunately, Rhodes is not able to get over it. Uh, just gets covered in the stuff and starts gagging uncontrollably. Uh, I'm going. I'm going to say you are stunned for the round, and yeah. you need to make a concentration check, which is just a, another con save, in order to keep Bless going. Oh no! That's oh, not no. good enough. Uh, the the light that Rhodes is projecting is extinguished by shit. Uh, and you lose the bless. And that was its turn. So next up is Alezi for the start of round two. Yay. In context of what just happened, um, 
I'm going to say that her rage didn't really start till just now. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally fine. Lesie, you got off line. <laughs> so she's like, oh, you motherfucker. And she just uh, tries to slam her battle axe down on skeleton. Well, how tall is the skeleton compared to her? You said uh, it was an ogre? Yeah, so it would be about ten foot tall. Like, its, okay. scra- it's head is scraping the ceiling. So she's trying to, like, cleave into its rib cage. Alright. Hit. And that is a plus six damage, because I have rage on nine damage. All right. Uh, That takes out a couple of ribs. Uh, It's starting to run out of ribs at this point. (laughs) Anything else from Uh, Alezi? Yeah, I don't think she can do anything with her bonus. Unless you want a frenzy, but maybe you want to hold off on that. Yeah, she's not going to frenzy. Okay, Una, you're up. (laughs) I was looking up things, so now I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sorry. (laughs) Uh, Your friends just got covered in shit. Oh, uh, gross. Um, all right, I'm just gonna cast um, Eldritch Blast, Blast again. Seems to be working so far. Yeah, so I'll just do that again. 19. Okay, easy hit. And then a 9. Oh, that's pretty big damage from an Eldritch Blast. Alright, so you hit it in the skull again, and you see uh, the back of it kind of shatter. It's starting to shake now and having a hard time con- keeping its form in- together. Anything else? No, not right, right now. Flynn, you're up. Okay, I'm gonna do two attacks again. Unless he's gonna yell at Flynn. <laughs> Just take it out, Flynn! That's what I'm gonna try to do. Hit. 16 and hit. 13. Both hit. Okay, so sneak attack just for the first one. 18, and then normal D6 with it. Three more. 21. Alright, so you uh, you actually slice into one of its arms and manage to get it right at the joint and pop it off. Uh, one, of its, uh, one of its arms is gone from the elbow down now. But, still. but it's still going. Rhodes, you are stunned. Wasn't, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that means you, you miss your turn. Yeah. So, Next, it's the ogre's turn, and uh, he uh, he is going to swing at the person who's done the most to him, and that is Flynn. Let me okay. Make sh- <laughs> <laughs> Let me make sure I've got this right. Um, he has a he has a club that seems to be made from the bone of something else, uh, with uh, some jagged spikes on the end of it. Sounds fine. Does a nineteen hit? Yes. You take 11 bludgeoning damage as it smashes into your shoulder. Ow. Can I use cutting words to cut that in half? Uh, you would have you would want to cutting words before I roll damage. Um, okay. The way cutting words works is it reduces the attack roll. Um, I don't... Does it reduce... Can you reduce damage with it? Yes. I think, I think you can, yes. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, supposed to be before the DM determines whether or not the attack roll succeeds or fails or before the creature deals its damage. Okay, well, then we'll yeah. take that battle back a little bit and you can roll to reduce the damage. I think I just roll 1d6. Yeah. Five. All right, so it's down to six damage. As uh, Una yells something to distract it, do you want to play that out? Um, Calm shithead. That'd be pretty good. No, because now you came up with it. <laughs> um, okay. Hey, shit, uh, shit brains. <laughs> no. It seems somehow distracted by that. It really shouldn't be, but it is. <laughs> and the blow on Flynn is not averted, but it is softened. I will... Peel back the screen a little bit to reveal that this guy has single-digit HP left. There is no way it will survive long enough to get another action. Uh, so uh, I would like to hand wave this and just say, uh, between the rest of you, you're able to hack it to pieces before it can move again. Okay. Alezi was going to go for a spine next, so... All right, so yeah, Alezi cracks through its spine. All right, so the skeleton falls, and... Uh, now you have a room that's full of shit, and ha- some of you are covered in shit. There's also a, a skeleton that's not moving anymore in there. Uh, Rhodes immediately tries to, like, get out of the shit. <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, Alessi's heading for the edge. Flynn is standing still at the moment, very stunned at everything that just happened. Uh, Rhodes is gonna start trying to, like, spit onto the ground and, like, wipe his eyes out. Um, Alessi stops before she actually gets out and then kind of grumbles and sighs because she knows once she gets out, she might have to get back in again. <laughs> so she stops and turns back around and goes back into to the direction of the skeleton to <laughs> look around the area. All right, uh, investigation, please. Something Leslie is great at. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to cha- I'm gonna have to fix that one day because, by all means, she should probably have a little investigation because of her background. But I'm looking through my spells and I don't have anything for clean shit up, uh, unless I use Firebolt to just oh, self immolate. It, it has it has been less than an hour. I can roll a d6. Yes. For my inspo, right? Yes, you never use that inspiration, so go ahead. Uh, and I, I will I will mention someone on here I suspect has pressed the digitation. <laughs> I'm sure oh my it's god. Not me. It's just a nine. <laughs> Una casts press the digitation just on, on Rhodes' head. Oh, thank you. Oh, that was oh, it was in my mouth. Yeah, I don't have anything for that. Len, are you gonna come out of the, the pool of I might. gross water? Um, are you talking to me? No, Flynn. Flynn. Oh, what? 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 Are you coming out of the gross water? Yeah. Yeah. So sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are, are you actually coming out of the gross water towards uh, Una? Yes. Okay. As soon as as soon as Flynn's close enough, I'll cast Prestidigitation on his face as well. I can't it off. find it on this list, even though I would have put it there. That's one of the things. But I should have a block of soap in my inventory. Okay. Uh, we'll say you have that. Uh, I scrubbed my mouth out then. <laughs> <laughs> Which means just kind of like trying to put the bar of soap in his mouth and then having it like foam up and then trying to swish that around. <laughs> Did he like cut it into chunks first? No, he just like tried to let like the soap stuff mix with the saliva. Oh my god. He's not eating soap, he's trying to foam and get the taste out. That's gonna yeah, taste but... so bitter though. That's oh. fine, it's better than shit. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> All right. Um, I, I'm guessing Alessi didn't find anything. No, that not with that roll. Yeah. So, like, um, where the skeleton was laying, anything now? Well, I mean, he it didn't move much, so you'd need to scrape it over. But you can do that pretty easily. Um, and you see brackish water that you can't really see through. Uh, anything over there, Alessi? Not really. She's gonna gra- uh, grab another one of the bone, cast light, and kind of shove it around near the uh, area that it was staying in, in, just in case she can see through the murky water at all. Uh, you can see the light but you can't really see any detail under the murky water. Alright, she, she's just going to move it along the wall to see if there's any uh, hole in the wall. You don't see anything. Yeah, I got nothing. Looks like the skeleton was the only thing down here. There has to be a way out of here. Unless someone was just trapping nobles down here. But where are they? Good point. Maybe uh, whatever summoned up this thing grabbed them and hauled them out somewhere. I'm going to roll an investigation check to see if I can just wander around the room and find something of use. Any way that indicates a way out. Okay, roll investigation. I typed it in, but okay. There we go. That's a natural yeah. 20. Nice. So after uh, tromping around a little bit, you hear a metallic ring when you have a footfall near the center of the room. Tapping a couple more times, you find that there is some sort of drain, drain or grate uh, in the pool. Uh, I'm going to reach down and see if I can get my fingers around it. Make a strength check. I'm good at those, I think. I am. You're decent. And I have a stone. This is an ability check, right? Yes. Yep. All right. So, it takes you a couple of tugs, but you do manage to lift it up. The water drains, uh, starts draining. We'll call it water. It's mostly not water, but um, uh. it does start to drain away. And uh, you can see the floor for a change. There's something shimmering on the left wall uh, at the floor. Is anyone near it? I mean, Alezi and Rhodes are still in the room, so they'd both be pretty close to it. 
Alessi's gonna walk over there and check it out. All right. Uh, you pick up what looks to be a badly soiled gemstone of some kind. You need to clean it off to really identify it. All right, Una. A little help. What's that? Some kind of stone. Need it cleaned off, but I need cleaned off, please. <laughs> is, the, is the water gone now? Yes. Then Una will make her way over there. <laughs> <laughs> Treading lightly in case she slips and falls. Flynn, Flynn will join the group too. Uh, it's worth noting that the smell from the drain is awful. And the drain itself is like large enough that you might be able to stick your arm into it, but no person is going into it. Oh, thank God. <laughs> uh, I, cast, I cast Prestidigitation on the the shiny shininess. Okay. Uh, it is an emerald about the size of one's thumbnail. Should be pretty valuable. Seems like something a noble would carry. Yeah, but was it our noble? Who knows? Maybe we can get some scrying done. How much does would, it, would I recognize it as something of his? No. Uh, he wore jewelry, but like, if that is of his, then it popped out of some other piece, and you wouldn't be able to recognize it just from that. Okay. Yep. Can uh, I make an investiga investigation check now that I'm in the room? You may. Okay, thank you. Four. Also, Una, you didn't tell me if you cast prestidigitation on Alessi, or is she still muddy? Oh, are you are you still wearing your mask, or did you take it off and your face is clean? Oh, Alessi took it off. Oh, okay, because I was only cl cleaning people's faces, if, if anything else, because it's only one cubic foot. Ah, uh, alright. So I can clean your mask for you. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say <laughs> that prestidigitation is not able to clean the mask up enough to be useful again. Um, okay. You would need to change out the herbs inside and probably wash it down with soap. Yeah, but it's good enough. It's not going to get ruined on That's, the way. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can, you can salvage it from this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good enough. Okay. I got a ten on my investigation. Yeah, you don't see anything else to investigate unless there's something down the drain. And we didn't see anything on the wall behind where the, the skeleton thing was? No, though it seems like it's just a wall. Alessi's going to go over to the drain, and she still has the uh, glowing piece of bone, and she's going to stick it in the drain. Okay, the, the smell is immediately overpowering. The light of your spell vanishes only halfway as far as you can reach. This is some thick... Crap. Ugh. I, I just drop the bone and back away. Alright. It is very dark in here. <laughs> <laughs> was that our light? <laughs> well, I had the... Uh, well, no. no the other, the other stone would have... Gone out when you cast the other light yeah. spell. Light. Yep. <laughs> Uden, I mean, every not bothered at all. <laughs> I mean, everyone else has dark vision or low light vision, I think. So... Alessi is really the only one significantly affected here, but yes, you did just <laughs> drop the only light down the drain. <laughs> she just, she kind of, she stops for a moment, and she's like, wait, shit, fuck. <laughs> Good indeed, yeah. Uh, is going to wince, but he's going to try and reach his arm down the drain to see if there's a mechanism in there. All right, make a constitution saving throw, please. Oh, uh. <laughs> Alessi's gonna cast light on her battle axe. Okay. <laughs> when she finally figures out what she's doing. And All she right. sees. Oh. Yeah, I was about to say, you cast light, and just as it comes on, uh, there is Rhodes with his arm straight into the drain. <laughs> what are you doing? You are gonna catch all kinds of diseases. Actually, I can't catch any diseases. Paladin perk. Oh. That's pretty handy. Was handy a pun because my arm is in a drain? <laughs> <laughs> I was not joking about that fortitude, uh, constitution save, by the way. <laughs> Red, are you making your save? Oh, I didn't know it was me. I'm not the yeah. one who's that handy. Fine. You're, you're, you're the one who's putting your hand in shit. Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear there was a constitution save. Yes, it's a constitution yeah. save. Did not hear that part. Sorry. Okay. Whoops. We're just going to cut that long pause out. It's fine. Mm. I will make it longer. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for Godot. He'll put elevator music in. <laughs> <laughs> Cricket noises. You managed to keep your, your lunch down. Like, that pie is still where it was. 
<laughs> but just barely. Um, you reach down, you feel around, it's just shit. <laughs> He's gonna stand up quickly and try and shake his arm. Well, it was an idea. Yeah, I, got, I, I think this was just a trap. I think nobles were lured down here with the, uh, with the intent on finding a rain collar and got them instead. What does a so rain collar do? Where would they, where would they go from here, though? Like I said, someone probably just came down the well and grabbed them. But, but, but see, the, the thing is, I can definitely see someone in this part of town going down this well without getting many looks because you, you guys said about subtlety, but this place is not subtle. All those clothes on wires we saw, th those were signs of drugs and prostitution and thieves and all that. Uh -huh. I don't see someone going back out the same way carrying a body and not getting looks. Also, I don't see someone coming out of here at all. I don't know how we're going to get out. Yeah, because oh, wasn't it just a straight drop? Guys, I, I can push all up. You can grab onto the thing. You can grab onto the ladder. It's fine. Yeah, but with, with a ladder that doesn't reach the bottom, I don't see someone carrying a body out of here. There has to be another way. Or a place that, in here that they're putting them. You're the guy that's sneaky type. Go find the way out. Yeah, you know, like an investigation check for... Secret yeah, but I don't know where I would start specific. looking. <laughs> I'll just... Okay, investigation check. I'm not sure where I'm looking, but... Okay, roll them. Everywhere. Investigation... You still have Three. disadvantage. Hey, can, uh, I, yes. can, can I just, like, examine the skeleton? Sure. Yeah, I was gonna do that next. It's 14. I'll, I'll go with you, so... if I is that Okay. Una and Rhodes go to investigate the skeleton while Flynn investigates generally. So the skeleton, the big, the only thing about it that isn't just an undead skeleton is the weapon, which appeared to have been manufactured, but you're not sure by whom. And it's a very crude weapon. Uh, it, it's mostly like a, a femur or something of a large animal and the tip of it has been broken off such that there's a, that, that there are sharp spikes on the edge of it. This is not something that an undead creature would have come across naturally. Meanwhile, Flynn, you don't find anything of note here to to check out. Like this is like the the gem was the only unusual thing. The the water's already been drained. Uh, Rhodes has done nothing but foul up his hand trying to find more to it. So, like, you don't see anything else to investigate in this room. Um, real quick, Docs, how big did you say that emerald was? Uh, it's about the size of a thumbnail. Alright, I'm just adding that to... Yeah. In uh, Docs, the skeleton we fought, is it the full skeleton of a creature that was once alive, or is it sort of cobbled together? It is, it seems to be the full skeleton of a single creature. Uh, plus that weapon, which came from something else. Hmm. Any luck over there, Flynn? No, I don't really see anything that we haven't seen already. Hmm. Can, uh... What time is well, it? Leslie, let me see that time, uh, that emerald. Uh, I'd I... say that it's approaching noon at this point. Rhodes is going to turn to the group. All right, well, if we can manage to get out here through the well, I think it might be a good idea to ask who's been seen around this place. I don't think anyone is going to talk about who's seen, been seen here, because I don't think anyone actually cares. Can I can I cast identify on the emerald? Uh, I believe first of all, identify requires you to use a pearl that costs fifty gold pieces, uh, and I believe I, it has a long casting time. I'm not sure about that part. It says one minute. Okay. But you, I know before when you were talking about ritual spells, you said we wouldn't have to worry about. Uh, I, I for cheap material components. Oh, okay. A lot okay. of these will. Cast it's like, okay, like, if you look up, you'll see ice storm, components, a pinch of dust, and a few drops of water. Fuck that. But, uh, <laughs> identify material components, a pearl worth at least 100 gold pieces, and an owl feather. I don't care about the feather, but the pearl is actually something that you would need to invest in. Okay, that's fine. Um, then can I cast just the tech magic on it? You can. Or in general? You sure, okay. yeah. Uh, so you cast the tech magic, the gem is not magical. You, the only okay. thing that you do detect, I detect anything else? Yeah, I was about to say you do detect the lingering remnants of whatever spell was animating the skeleton, but it is gradually fading away. It's a necromancy aura that is gradually fizzing out. Okay, 
Guys, I think we should just backtrack and see if there might be another door. Was there an, wasn't there another saying that we didn't push? Yes. Yes, there was. Maybe we need to try that. Actually, maybe right. we should take a short or a short rest. <laughs> I am for that. But not, I don't know yeah, if let's not rest I don't here. know if Yeah, I was about to say I don't know if Docs would let us short rest in the this cool. terrible smelling place. <laughs> uh, I don't give a fuck if Docs is <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're in a mostly abandoned well, so it's not going to smell pleasant anywhere. But there are places you can go that aren't this bad. Yes, let's do that. That, that hallway between the first room and the this room isn't wasn't too bad, if I recall correctly. Yeah, it was tolerable. You could take a short rest there. All right, let's do that. All right. So, what are you guys up to during this short rest? Anything besides spending hit dice? Um, trying to solve this mouth issue. <laughs> Is it solved? The the so. So you, you're gonna taste it forever. My my, then, uh, my problem um, is I have to use my mouth for healing. Okay, so I Leslie actually has uh, reserve herbs, and since they were in the bag, they were probably wrapped and they didn't get dirty. I'll I'll allow it. Okay, so she's gonna offer maybe. One of those herbs was a mint leaf. Uh, I'll allow it. Yeah, just that's me being so, nice. Thank you. <laughs> so she's gonna offer that to Rhodes. My main fear is that I'll go to he- try and heal people, and they'll be like, "No, it's fine. I'll just die." <laughs> <laughs> Practical. Uh, my question is because I was looking at this, and I don't see anything that says I can't. With my song of rest, is that just I can use that as many times as we take a short rest? Yes. Okay, then I'll um, use it. But you you do need to actually spend hit dice to get the benefit of a song of rest. Yeah, because wait, what do you mean? Uh, they, you don't. They you, to, yeah, yeah, they have to spend at least one hit die, which allows you to heal. Anybody who wants to benefit from the extra song of rest hit die has to spend at least one of their own. Oh, so like what they would use for healing, they would use that d6 instead. Yeah. Okay. On top of. Or no, yeah, on, on top, top of it. it it's okay, that. Okay. I think the thinking. only person that is hurt is Flynn, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think if you use song rest, I'd be back up to full. Oh, well, okay. we have to roll dice for it, so. Because I just yeah. got really good with that one hit dice. Uh, yeah, you did. Okay. Uh, that's an additional d6 or d8 from the song of rest. I don't remember. It, it's a d6. Probably a d6. d6. Okay. It is a d6. And are you rolling that or am I? You roll it. Uh, Flynn. Okay. I was about to say, uh, Rav is only now a D10 on her guard stuff, and uh, she's a level 10, so. Yeah, no, it takes a long time before any of that stuff levels yeah. up. It's really nice. I'm back up to full. Okay. <clears throat> so between the acid burns and the damage from the skeleton, uh, Flynn's had a pretty bad day, but he's managed to recover from it. Uh, you can still see a lot of red marks and some blistering from the acid, but... Other than that, like they're they're cosmetic uh, injuries at this point. Uh, so you guys and he, and he looks very pale. Speaking of which, uh, paladins are immune to disease. Never mind. Um, yeah. <laughs> what were you gonna happen? Uh, Do you, you don't. Are you gonna uh, you have don't me know. Gold to see if I get cholera. Uh, <laughs> I was actually already. I was actually going to just say that you ha- start having symptoms during this short rest, but you're immune, so. I already start having rice water diarrhea. Great. <laughs> anyway, so you guys ha- you guys take your rest, and Flynn catches his breath. Uh, Alessi has time to refill her fume mask, her plague mask, which, for the record, was something that she had due to her background. Specifically because she came from Northwall. Yeah, and, and was in a situation fairly recently where they would be needed. Reference to one of my other games. So, yeah, uh, anything else during the short rest, or are you going to head back up to the central well? I'll take that as a head back up to the central well. All right, so you guys get back up to the central well. Your thoroughly soiled boots completely ruining the water in there. Okay, everyone, hold back and let me do it right this time. And I'm going to use Mage Hand to press the button. All right, so you press the last button, it slides in, and you hear a mechanism engage on the other side of the well from the first passage that you just got out of. 
and another door slides down, revealing another hallway, That this one moving straight and uh, leading to a ladder that goes down. All right, we don't well, find a fucking mystic mummy. <sighs> I've got a feeling this is the correct path, and we somehow just chose poorly. I think we are going to choose poorly no matter what. Yeah. Let's go down the ladder. How did the dwarf hit this? He didn't. Somebody came with him. Alternatively, he might have been a mage. Actually, do we know that? Because everybody he has a little bit of magic, right? Flynn, you wouldn't have known him to be a, a mage, per se, but yeah, uh, magic is... Minor magics are common. And also, he could have just had a stick. I was about to say stick. Unless he was just trying to make a short joke. Guys. Okay, well, <laughs> it sounded serious. Men of this noble stature are in short supply. <laughs> I stole that one from Trek. It doesn't count. <laughs> All right, who's going down the the ladder first? I think I, I think Flynn will because no, if he Flynn can he can see ahead. First, Rhodes is gonna try. <laughs> Fl Flynn has dark vision though; he can see. Sh so so does Rhodes. Months. Everybody has dark vision, but Alizzy. Yeah, so maybe you should take up the the rear this time, Alizzy, and uh, so we can keep that light down. Yeah, good call. So whoever wants or to go maybe first. Maybe the one person who can heal the entire party shouldn't be the first one to walk down a fucking ladder in darkness. There's no need to swear. <laughs> I go down first. I don't care what Rhodes says. I go down first. Rhodes hops. You know, she didn't yell at me for swearing. Was previous. Um, wait. As uh, Flynn is go going down, Rhodes is going to turn to the other two and sort of uh, whisper. Is he always this determined to kill himself? Yeah, but he's usually less angry about it. Hmm. Something's going on. I, yes. Anyway, uh, Rhodes is gonna well, get Well, we better get down there before he does kill him. Yeah. Uh, Uno follows Rhodes. Well, as he takes up the- All right. So, the four of you descend, Flynn a little bit ahead of the others. It's hard, again, it's hard to tell without landmarks for reference, but you'd guess you descend about three stories on this metal ladder that's really, uh, like, it, it seemed more like a ladder at the top because there were sides to it, but as after you continue f going down a little bit, it turns basically back into pegs that are driven straight into the wall. But it's still good enough for you to climb down without a problem. Uh, you reach the bottom floor, and you see a pathway that... Uh, you're in the middle of a T-juncture, so you have one path ahead, and then a path to the right, and a path to the left. The whole room is made up of uh, really sm like sm rough stone that looks like it had been hewn straight out of bedrock, almost. Like, these aren't bricks anymore. You are in s single piece of solid stone that has been carved into. At the end of each hallway... You see uh, a set of stone doors. The one to the right, it looks like there are bars on it, but it is complete darkness on the other side. Of it. And that is where we're going to end tonight, because I do have stuff I have to take care of before the night is over. And any if we go any further, I think we're going to get entangled for quite a while. So yeah, there's our session. Yay! Yay! Yay. Yay. I'm so bummed out. I'm ready to keep fighting. <laughs> Well, I'm hopefully not. the whole the whole poop talk had me so depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome Actually, to the glamorous life of an adventurer, where you are literally crawling through shit. Literally, what? Finish your thought. <laughs> I said literally crawling through shit. I guess it didn't come through. You cut oh. out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. God, there was a moment back there after we'd left the drunken weasel, and I just realized how that encounter went down, and I got so sad. <laughs> mean to me <laughs> and i just i don't i've never played roads with somebody who was almost bordering on hostile or dismissive dismissive is got, better yeah yeah and i just got so sad about it <laughs> <laughs> and like how poorly like he just stood there oh man i'm, I'm not gonna lie i really wanted to fight something today so it's if if flynn had not interrupted una i was probably gonna end up fighting the the that weasel owner. Oh, that would have ended so well for you. <laughs> oh, God. No. I was so annoyed with him. <laughs> I would have murdered you. He had an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> what, good are two what good is a paladin and a barbarian and a, and a thief if they're not going to back me up? <laughs> okay, the barbarian was trying to say as little as possible. <laughs> I'm not sure. 
uh, background as a city watch person to show old habits and them to get their ass kicked out of there. Alternatively, I think I think I could have convinced him to not put you both on a favor to get that information because that information was not worth. I don't I don't know. We didn't really have anything else to offer. I mean, I think it is going to be worth it. We just got to find out what's on the actual fucking pathway we should be, not the shit drain. <laughs> Which, I didn't get to say this in session, but how fucked is it up is it that the local water supply is connected to a shit cistern? Yeah, that's a little weird. <laughs> Red, I, I, I really do, really do wish that you had not volunteered to join Flynn in the favor. See, the problem is... Because it, it, would, it would not have come up if you had no, said nothing. It would have just been me. And the problem is, that's I had gross, already had right? it in mind that... This is an area of prostitutes, and this is something Rhodes does. As part of his work, he goes down and offers his services for free, like, as part of his religious calling. Like, hey, you guys are out here not exactly fighting the good fight, but... Yeah, and you could have done that separately. That's not what the guy's going to make you do. I don't believe for a second. We yeah, made him... I think, I think for, for just to end this argument, for, for this sake, it makes sense from a story standpoint that Flynn's going to have to realize that He's in a team, and that means his teammates are going to do stu the same stupid shit he does. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you can believe that the second, like, they're back in any sort of, like, home location, Rhodes is going to be like, Flynn, can I talk to you for a moment? <laughs> <laughs> like, I already have it, like, sketched out, like, how am I opening this conversation? Because it's got to happen. <laughs> so I, I think I think that was fun. We, we had a good... Uh... Game yeah, that today. was. There's a lot about that game that was very satisfying. I thought. I like yep. the pie. The pie was great. Probably it was definitely not worth the two silver. I'm sure, but I no, was not like, even yeah. a little bit. Like that's like a that's that's a, a like that, that's like a ten dollar slice of pie. Holy, ah, was this service? Elizabeth is just tired and, and wants to get her money and go home. She's like, I've solved it right now. Let's go. <laughs> and that would work for a little while but then eventually Williams would be like right, did you try the other button? Uh, shit, we gotta go back don't we? <laughs> yeah, well, see the thing is we've already taken and then there'd be all sorts of shit yeah, no, I know uh, It's since Una has no insight I was trying really hard to get other people to do stuff that I don't think she would do. And I was like, have we checked for traps? Did we try the... Okay, fine. You know what? We're going to go back and we're going to go press the other button. Because like, as soon as you said there wasn't anything in there, I was like, oh, we got to go back and press the other button. Yeah. I was like, but Una wouldn't think of that. I didn't think... <laughs> I thought both buttons had to be pressed to open that door. So I'm like, there's one path. And we both those buttons were good buttons. And we pressed one that opens the door. I think in my mind, I'm like, the waste one is for short people. <laughs> <sighs> I know that's why I went with that, because I was like, wait, Stone Kiln is a dwarf, therefore he cannot reach tall, so therefore he would go for the one that's waist height. So if he died, he probably died through this one. I mean, I understand your logic, but sticks are a thing. <laughs> we're in a well. Where did he get a stick? Did he bring he, he, he He's a fucking to... noble. He might walk with a cane because he's an asshole. Okay, yeah. that, that makes sense. Speaking of yes. being an asshole, remember that time Doc said cinnamon pie? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part about that is there's cinnamon in apple pies. <laughs> I don't cook. Pie? Fuck you. It could have like, probably a pumpkin pie be because like that's dry like cinnamon in a pie crust. No, he, he was preparing something with cinnamon to start with. It was probably a pumpkin pie because you know they they have a lot of cinnamon in it. Th I don't. Cinnamon is too. I don't cook, so I was just making something up. He had something. He was making a pie that involved cinnamon. That's a thing that uh -huh. exists. I'm relatively sure. I'm sending you recipes now on Pinterest. That's what's going to happen. Oh, God. <laughs> anytime, anytime you have an orc, it's gonna be, you're going to have a, a preloaded list of things it could be making. For future reference, usually when you make a pie, you it depends on the pie, but often pie recipes have you dry bake the crust, whereas, you know, you form it in the pan and then bake it with, like, dry beans in it just to weigh it down, and then you fill it afterwards and maybe bake it again, depending on the pie. I like the sound effect of the more you know at the end of that. 
I, I, I don't know. Like, if it's more, inv in, if it involves more than a microwave, I probably have no business attempting it. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> There's some really quick and easy things you can do in a kitchen, even when you're depressed, like me. Crockpot. Everything better. Crockpot's good. It. Just taking a protein and putting a little bit of seasoning on it is good. Vegetables. Paprika solves all your problems. Paprika is pretty good, yeah. Mm. Some seasoning mixes as long as they don't have salt in it, so you can salt it outside of that. This has We're been cooking with a ragtag bag of bastards. Hey, it's join good us next nice. time. Nerds <laughs> have depression; they need to know some easy, quick things to do. I willingly talk about like my kitchen experiences. <laughs> I was mostly joking there, but I mean, for me, it's just a matter of I'm lazy enough that I'll make something elaborate for a microwave meal, but it's still a microwave meal, you know? Nothing wrong with microwaving frozen vegetables, I'd say. Well, that's not what I'm microwaving, but let's move on. Or sausage, but anyway. Okay. Is there anything <laughs> else in-game we wanted to discuss before we yes. do our exit? Okay. Docs, do you want to share with the class? Uh, I was saying that? yes to, like, let's move on. Oh, oh okay. I don't have anything. Yeah. Does anybody else? We'll edit that part out. The cooking part? <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I was talking about. No, it was so fucking choice. No, no, I'm joking. Okay. Anyway, I, I think we're done. So, I am Docs. Hi, I DM this. I don't really do a whole lot else that I'm um, ready to talk about for advertising stuff. So, let's go with Scott. What are you up to? Hi, I'm Scott. I'm Squirrel Row in a lot of places. I've, as always, got my comic, Between the Lines Comic, and my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Squirrelbro. Excellent. Renee, what about you? Hi, I've been Renee. Um, I'm core to the core on pretty much everything. I also have a Patreon now, so definitely go check that out. Links are going to be down below. Thank you, guys. Excellent. KQ. Hi, this is KQ. I've been playing Elezzy, the rather impatient barbarian, it seems. And uh, all my links will be down below. I am most active on Patreon and Instagram. Excellent. And finally, Red. I've been Red, and probably will continue to be Red. I've been playing Rhodes, and as usual, I'm not doing much. I'm Tumblr at ADHD Alistair, Twitter at Red of the Wolves, and is it is it uncouth to plug your Pinterest? Because I've been doing a lot of shit on there and having a lot of fun recently. This is your section. You do whatever the hell you want. All right, my Pinterest is the Stone Angel Forty Two, and I no, it bugs me now that I have three different usernames for three different sites. But eh, shit happens. Indeed. We're at the end, so I'll go ahead and do this. Uh, do, if you enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Also, we have a Twitter, at Bag of Bastards, and we'll be doing stuff on there, maybe. Maybe? Yes. Yes, we'll be doing stuff on there, says the person who does most of the Twitter stuff. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye! Bye! Bye!